Hello, welcome to the Honest World Gamer. I'm your host, Rob. It's Sunday afternoon, and I'm joined in the studio by Mr. Jonathan Etland himself, all the way from Norway. Hi, John. Hello. <laughs> Don't do this for the whole. This is, oh God. This is so so hello everyone uh oh my god do you want to do you want to uh do you want to do you want to say hello hi <laughs> hello hello so hello everyone welcome to the show um uh, me and jonathan are here in the studio because we're having well let me just tell you i think the the whole of this show can be summed up in a famous phrase life Finds a way. Life finds a way. Life finds a way. Uh, yeah, you guys, there, there should be sound. You guys should be able to hear us. Um, I'm pretty certain the sound's working. Jonathan's still there. Wow. Uh, good. Right, so uh, if you've just joined us, I just want to say uh, thank you to everyone and Patreon and Twitch. Uh, we, it's a bit of a, um, a random show that we're doing right now. Um, and John, do you want to tell us as to why? Well, it was a random, random drop, wasn't it? There was a random bank holiday Sunday. Uh, it, we it, we're just chilling out. We were having a couple of coffees. Uh, I was showing Jonathan all of my haunts around Nottingham, which is effectively two cafes, uh, two yes, two, <laughs> two places, and um, uh, and then all of a sudden the entire Silver Earth Battle Tome was released, unbeknownst to us. So we just sat and read it, and we're going to just talk about it right now. How's that sound? Are you in? Are you in for that? Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, man. <laughs> So Tyler Emerson's in the chat. So hello everyone, uh, Gold Bear, Tata Fishy, DJ Batman, uh, Dreadwoods, Tyler Emerson, uh, The Gab, uh, LLV, how you doing bruv? Uh, Colonel Cavish saw yesterday, Jabber AOS. So uh, yeah, we've started reading about, we've, if you've joined us on Facebook or on YouTube, we will be taking questions live on Twitch. So just the Honest Wargamer uh, on Twitch, you can search for us there. You can get into the chat. Uh, www.twitch.tv-thehonestwargamer. <laughs> H-H-E. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hi, Johnny Hawkwind and Nodishi. Um, so, yeah, we've got the, the Silver Death Battle Tone to hand, and we're just going to do a flat-up review. Do you want to do a Too Long Didn't Read? What are your thoughts? Like, like you know, if someone's like, I don't want to listen to all of this crap, what's your conclusion? Bef do the conclusion first. Uh, scenery Pyramid Scheme, confirmed. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. But uh, what most people don't know is I've actually, uh, I have uh, 14 Silver Death Wildwoods myself. And what I've actually been doing is I made myself a, a green mold, you know, that green stuff mold press. Oh, yeah, like Insta mold. So. Yeah, Insta mold, yeah. yeah. Uh, and I've been churning them out for the past like 30 weeks Jesus. in preparation for this. So if anyone would like um, uh, Silver Death Wildwoods uh, that are knockoff and made of, uh, I've actually made them out of super noodles. So I don't know if you've seen, there's this guy who's doing like repair work on super noodles. So basically a car, he puts some super noodles in it and then he wets it a bit and then he like sands it down. It's amazing what he's been repairing with it. So uh, my Silver Earth Wildwoods are made of completely of super noodles. So if it ever rains uh, or you spill water on it or anything, it will fall apart in a heartbeat. Um, so probably don't buy them. Also, they're not for sale. No. And aren't real. Yeah. <laughs> no letters, please. <laughs> Yes, please send us no letters. Uh, <laughs> hi, Bob Monkey Cheese. Uh, hi, the Dreadwoods. About to review with the Outlet. What you, what you even doing? I'm just doing it because it's right out and I'm really excited. And Jonathan was here and we thought, fuck it, let's talk about it. Yeah. Plus, it doesn't need an FAQ because the conclusion is it's rubbish. Oh. That's what I think. Go on, say, say what your actual review is then. No, I think it's cool. I think it's cool. I think it's probably where it should be. Fuck, I've put the wrong. I put, I put your. I've put the wrong... You thing. never get right. I've done the wrong overlay. Fuck. Hold on. There we go. I've nailed it. There you go. You look better now. Uh, <laughs> um, yes. So, yeah. The, the leaks have gone all up online from the uh, thing. Yeah. So, uh, Tyler Emerson's a bit triggered about the Silver Death Wildwoods. So, let's get into it. Yeah? Um, so, should we get into the Battle Tone review? For let's Death? do. Let's do it. Let's do it. Should, so, we, should we start off with the Wildwoods? Or? Well, yes, let's start off with the Wildwoods. So if you guys uh, have just have never heard or read anything about Sylvaneth or you just played them against your friends, one of the interesting things about the Sylvaneth Wildwood, if you were a Sylvaneth player, is you normally would have... A Sylvaneth Wildwood would normally consist of three trays from Games Workshop. So it would be the three bases with the um, optional uh, trees to go in the holes. <laughs> 
I hear the the sounds of a thousand people being triggered. No, put the trees in the holes, and a whole bunch of people are like, I haven't even painted the trees. It's weird that we don't even play with the holes. You don't even play with the holes. What no. do you glue them in? No, you just walk all over them. <laughs> you walk all over yeah. the holes. <laughs> it's just it's just stupid, like. Um, uh, was it a full battle tome? Go the entire silver battle tome is out. Uh, if that helps you out, um, Tatfishy is everywhere. It's over Twitter. It's everywhere, so we can talk about it, which is fine. Um, because uh, you can't unsee with your eyes, and I'm going to be doing this entire review from memory. Yes. The entire review from memory, oh. from what I saw on Facebook. Pretty decent which is a memory. public forum. I have no, I have, it's okay, no one can see your hands. It's all good. <laughs> they can't see my eyes either. No, they can't. Yeah, you're good. Um, so the similar one was previously you would have three, um, uh, and but obviously some players had 12. Anyone in the chat who is... Um, uh, who is a silver player? Ask, tell me how many wild would you have? I think I have nine, maybe twelve in total myself yeah. uh, as a silver death player. Um, but then they were like, they were like, we're re- releasing some new ones, and we were all pretty hyped about the fact it was just going to be one terrain piece. You know, like you know, you only need one um, uh, herdstone, you only need one fane for uh, one. I mean, you might need more feculent narmors, more than one. Yeah, yeah, but they're, sm- they're quite small though. It's, it's pretty small. Yeah. yeah, it's not. It's not, it, and also not too difficult to transport. The the loon shrine is quite difficult to transport. It's a hard one. It's a hard one, but you don't need. Uh, so the dreadwoods has fourteen. Nodishi has nine. Master Kamal has ten bases. The G, the gab has twelve. Uh, if you don't play with the trees uh, in, then you're an awful human. Fact says the dreadwood. Hi Relian, he has fifteen bases. So uh, we've all got a lot. But um, John, am I right in thinking that? There's a pyramid scheme going on with the new uh, Silver Nest Wildwood that they yeah. released. We thought it was going to be a single piece that would replace all Wildwoods yeah. with some sort of fancy mechanic. One piece to rule them all. One piece to rule them all and in the darkness bind them. And what happened? It's, it looks like it's kind of the same. It says, it says the following description uh, from memory here. Uh, An Awakened Wildwood is a single train feature consisting of three to six Citadel Wood models. Mm-hmm. So... Does this mean that there will be a new release of Citadel Woods, or will they rename the... Citadel Woods to the Awakened Woods? No. Uh, like Tyler's saying in the chat, unless I missed it, the old wood bases can't be used in match play unless they get a keyword update. Because previously it was Sylvaneth Wildwoods, now all of the keywords are for the Awakened Wildwood. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So unless they get updated, um, yeah. which I'm almost certain they will, uh, because their War Scrolls just online. Uh, and they want this, because uh, the new one is the Circle as well, right? Yes. Uh, and... There's well, it's, it's the same base pattern as the uh, the tray for the silver death Yeah, so our old Citadel of Wildwood just fit right inside there, wouldn't it? Uh, ish, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but they, they, they've changed the wording on how you're allowed to set it up. So it's just before it was just every wood had to touch, basically. Mm-hmm. But now there has to be a circle. Yep. So you can't do it like the, the star. You yep. have to do it like this. But uh, there's some, basically some, some kind of different mechanics, but what it isn't... Oh, I've got myself into a fucking linguistic block there. Effectively, what's true is you still have to, if you wanted to upgrade or change to the new models, you would still have to buy a significant amount of the new Wildwoods to use in the game. But thankfully, they changed the rule for how many units you could put through them, making them pretty rubbish. Not pretty rubbish, that's not fair. At least a little bit worse. Which is nice. So previously you yeah. could send, you could, so if you had a Wildwood inside of your deployment with your models within three inches or six, uh, with, wholly within six inches, sorry, um, you could teleport them to another Wildwood. But now you can only do that with one unit, a bit like Skaven Norholes. But in order to do that, you have to have one your side, one their side. And if you have a Tree Lord Ancient, you are going to be able to like just pop one on, uh, which is cool. But they have to be six inches away from objectives uh, and an inch away from other terrain. Uh, so you see that 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 is where I think the bottleneck will be, because uh, since you can't put them up uh, like it could before, do the star thingy, uh, you have to do the circle, and since it's six away from uh, um, objectives and one away from scenery, it's way more limiting, limiting, limiting. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. the word, right? Uh, and I can see how Sylvaneth players will moan and moan about how terrain is set up at tables even more than they did before. Yeah. Yeah, uh, and and again, uh, someone wants should still be one inches away from objectives. Uh, says no, she yeah, no, the, okay. the, the someone wants yeah. Um, so it, it's arguably just like 
Anyway, so what's happened is the Silver Death players still have to bring a, basically an entire extra box, which is just their terrain. Uh, so that's a little bit sad, really, that that hasn't uh, changed. It's also There's also the price difference. So, you know, everyone, some people... I personally like that both the Endless Spells and the terrain pieces. I really do. Super into it. I could see why someone maybe would bulk out having to... I mean, they're, they're pretty inexpensive for a very expensive hobby. £20 to £30 for the kind of terrain pieces. But a Silver Death player is probably looking at spending a couple of hundred English pounds. Uh, $900 dollar dues. And I think, if I'm right, 42,000 Corona at your country? <laughs> <laughs> no. 900 maybe. 900. Uh, <laughs> maybe more. Uh, so yeah, you have. To, so if you're gonna want to upgrade, I mean, you, you can laugh now. But they do we, look better though. They do look better. The new ones. Hiya, Wiener. The new ones. Yeah, yeah. Hi, OJ. And I think the new ones are a little bit easier to play with as well. Yes, because you don't have the hole. You have just the big hole. Yeah, mechanically a little bit easier on the tabletop. Although, um, as OJ's uh, not OJ, I think Jack Shadow's saying looks worse to carry them before is a real put off if we need eight more boxes of woods. So a little bit sad uh not sad very sad like if i was like a player of that army who super loved it i would be con uh i would be upset by that that they didn't attack that but problem if you, but if you super love it then you love the trees as well and then you're fine well if see if you super love it what you do is you go into the you you bring little origami plants instead because you're doing two things one like you're oxygenating the planet which is great and also people just feel better when they see plants so you're probably improving the mental health of the you person know who you're playing against you know it's plastic right no, you could. No, what I'm saying is, is you're take, the worst terrorists of anybody. <laughs> it's, it's, ironically, the Silmeth players are the worst people for the planet in Warhammer. I'm saying bonsai trees, just bonsai trees, like wild woods. So what? I, what I'm because we've got an incredibly clever community, right? So our options are this: buy a bunch of plastic from Games Workshop for ter terrain, very expensive and a little bit complex, or one of the clever boys out there makes a 3D printed base. The same shape as the new Wildwoods. However, it's got like a gap inside of it in which you can put like earth and then plant small bonsai trees. Yeah? And then that's what you do. And then That you... would be really easy to carry around with you. If it's for well, we'll see, that's, you don't have to do bonsai trees. Or when you get there, right, you could just fill it with... So you take them empty, fill them with a bit of earth when you get there. You know, from outside, earth is free. Yeah? Put for it now. in. Yeah? And then plant a couple of seeds. And they'll be like, where are your trees? But like, they're growing, man. Just wait here. This is fine. It's yeah. not really awakening, though, is it? <laughs> More like sleeping. Right? So the Wildwoods, Wildwoods got a little bit of nerf because you can only teleport one unit through it. Um, you have to buy multiple of them quickly. Um, they look better, the new ones, I think. Yeah, right. uh, but uh, if I was a Silver Knight player, I'd be rightly disgruntled. And, and I am a Silver Knight player, and I'm rightly disgruntled. Um, so that's pretty shit. Okay, Silver Knight, is that's the that's the Wildwood review? Yeah. Yeah? Good with that? Anything to add or not add to that? I don't know. I just think, uh, as I said before, I think we'll hear more mourning about how terrain is placed on the tables. Yeah, well, I think that's because, unfortunately, like that poor army, like and anyone who wants to play that army competitively, is just stimmied um, just by the... by. Uh, it was a problem that we all knew was there, and no one and Games Workshop could have fixed it. And then we thought they were doing it, and they didn't. So they, they've got every right to complain, in my opinion, because it's a justi justified complaint. Those are my thoughts. Um, right, okay, so uh, Allegiance Ability, have you got that in your brain? Uh, yep. <laughs> have, you, have you remembered the Allegiance Ability? Of course. They do look better. Everyone, if anyone doesn't think they look better, please put it in the chat. Um, but currently... So we can tell you that you're wrong. Yeah. I guess. Uh, well, yeah. I, you know. Everything isn't subjective. Well, you, so I've got Allegiance Abilities if you want. I have them as well in my well, mind. Well, go for it. Well, tell me what they are. Uh... You start. Okay, so you've got Forest Spirits, right? Yeah. So instead of setting a Silver Knight unit on a battlefield, you can place it to one side and say that it is set up in the hidden enclaves or reserve unit. You can set up uh, one reserve unit in the hidden enclaves for each unit you set up on the battlefield. So you can only put half yeah. hidden, uh, so you can't null deploy. At the end of your movement phase, you can set up a, one or more of the reserve units that are hidden in the realm enclaves on the battlefield, wholly within six inches of an awakened wildwood and more than nine inches from the enemy units. Any reserve units from the hidden enclaves that are not set up on the battlefield at the start of the fourth battle realm slain. So cool. Bit deep striking. Very useful. Very handy. Um, especially with cogs and the ender spell that these guys have, which you are going to be able to. There's also a command trait. So yeah. there are, there's actually a stackable. I think we got it up to seven earlier, didn't we? They put in a deadline, which I think is interesting. Like the fourth battle round. 
Yes, the uh, fourth battle round they have to come down by. That's quite cool, and I hope we see that in the future. Maybe in the new General's Handbook, uh, um, what are they called uh, battle plans. It would yeah. be cool, so that you can't like game turn five, drop down the heart renders, and and, and win the game. That would be cool. Uh, so yeah, that's a pretty solid choice. Um, oh, Adam Trunzo says my old Wanderers display board has spots for live plants. That's cool. Fuck yeah, that's badass. Um, uh, so, and OJ says, a T formation is so much easier to fit around tournament terrain as opposed to big circles, I'm concerned. Well, what's nice is Games Workshop haven't just released um, what can only be described as a monumentally large-scale piece of generic Age of Sigmar terrain in massive square blocks that will be almost impossible to put Wild Woods near. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag not a silver <laughs> Uh, I mean, uh, Adam Trunzo, I also made Chai Colonel Thunters. Adam Trunzo, you are brilliant. He is great, by the way. Chai, follow, is that the T? Yeah, yeah, you should follow him on Twitter. Just follow him on Twitter and you'll see. Uh -huh. uh, hi, hi uh, El Capitan, DJ Batman. Uh, also, if you guys are AOS players, uh, more than likely some of you donated some money to go fund me. So you guys are fucking radical. Thank you so much. Appreciate it loads. Um, next up, navigate the realm routes. Yeah. So uh, instead of moving, yeah. uh, you could take one friendly Silver Earth unit, hold within six of an awakened wild one. And they can navigate the realm routes. If it does so, remove that unit from the battlefield and set it up back again, wholly within six of another awakened wildwood and more than nine inches away from enemy units. So, this one, first off, one friendly unit can do this. So, yes, previously it could be multiple, now it's one. Second off, another awakened wildwood, which means you have to get another wildwood on the board, right? For this even to work. Mm -hmm. And you start off with the one. With some potential of getting more. That's very good. Yeah, the acorn. You could use the command ability. Not command ability. The ability on a tree lord ancient. Yeah. Uh, to put some, some forests down. Yeah. Uh, I agree. So, yeah. Pretty shit. In my opinion. Very different. Uh, Relian's just put in the chat. So make sure to read this out. I hate Rob's guts and I gave you money. Uh, if you love him, that, what's your excuse? Talking about not, uh, the GoFundMe. Appreciate that, Rillian. There's also a cool prize from Ben Sava, so that's probably why he's put money in there. The fucking cheapskate. But to wow. be fair, his, wow. his basement has flooded like five times, so. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't play, right? Uh? High tide. High tide. <laughs> Didn't really even play. Uh, no, it was his wife, right? Yeah. Played, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, so, yeah, so it's worse. The ability to navigate the realm routes is worse. Long story short, with arguably it being even harder to place. That, so you got. So you got. If you guys have not played competitive against competitive Sylvaneth in the past couple of years, basically what they do is this: they always have a one-drop army of three or four different types of flavor army. They put all their trees down, fucking tons of them. They deploy in places, and then they do this. Oh, please don't hurt me. Yeah. <laughs> Which is arguably quite boring, right? Isn't it? No, I like no, no, no. Disagree. Like, so it, what I like about Age of Sigmar, especially like, there's some key pieces inside the game. Like, uh, Marathi is a really solid one, right? I really like Marathi in the game for like functionality. Like, I'm sad at the loss of um, uh, Wrathmongers because of the same thing. You had this nice mechanic, like fairly unique, where things happened, right? Um, the Silvernath Wildwood was a thing. I didn't find it. Uh, I didn't find it difficult to play against, and I didn't find it difficult to play with. I actually felt it was harder for the Sylvaneth player because they played in that environment every fucking game of their life. I, I think, yeah. Whereas someone who played against the Sylvaneth player only had to play against them when they played the Sylvaneth. I think comparing Wrathmongers to, to the one drop Sylvaneth army is a bit off because you can interact with the Wrathmongers. You can decide how to deal with them. Either you don't or you do it. Mm. But you can't decide really anything versus the one drop. Unless you're one drop, and then it's a 50 50, and then they're basically fucked. So, like, from a game like design perspective, it's a bit. bit eh. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you. Like, like if, if I could go back to the. Yeah. Like Tyler said in the chat, if I go back to the drawing board and make it so. What I would have, like, I don't want to get into wish listing because people are listening to this for information. Yeah. But something simple, you get the new Wildwood, so it's one you got to buy, goes on the board. Yeah, and then that means that the the whole battlefield is surrounded by forest, and you just have it that Sylvaneth units can just like teleport off the board, but then come to the come back in from the board any board edge, oh, nine inches away, but like wholly within six of the edge. It's fairly restrictive, yeah. Realistically, like it's cool, like they're appearing from the thing. Like that would be simple, 
easy fix, but no, we're going to be playing in a world of trees. And that's like, but that's what it is. I personally like what they ha- have in the game, but I would have preferred a better fix. And so I am annoyed by it. But it's worse. So putting trees on the board is is harder and worse b- because of how they're shaped. You might have to buy new ones. Uh, teleporting them is worse. Um, and regenerating of them is fine. But the key thing that you miss out on is you have to work your balls off inside of this battle tome now to make sure that you can get a low drop army. Because if you, because Sylvaneth always had access to a one drop army, and they've become less and less and less prevalent in competitive Age of Sigmar. Like you get low drop armies, but not very low drop. If you look at the two like Smash Face lists that you see at the minute, Skaven and Flesh Eater Courts, they're pretty like. I mean, you get Flesh Eater Courts down to five and Skaven down to fives, I think. But like really one really one smash one's way better than that, right? Yeah. And Sylvaneth, I haven't actually decided to put the list together, but I don't know. Um, I don't imagine you'll be able to get super low. But you're going to be work. You're almost going to be making your army worse to make sure you can get it lower, so you can get wild woods on the board. That's going to be what players are going to have to do. Yeah, I do like um, the change where they put in. We need to be holy within. Because it used to be like, okay, I put up a unit next to this wildwood and just string it up across the board wherever I mm. want, basically. Which I thought was a bit much freedom for them. Yeah, I think I think having stuff like teleport with it, holy with it. Yeah. Anyway, so it's got worse, right? Yeah. So then you've got a new thing, Place of Power, which I really like. After territories have been chosen, but before armies are set up, pick one terrain feature on the battlefield that was not set up by your opponent. As part of the army, do not take battle shot tests for friendly Sylvaneth units while they're wholly within six inches of that terrain feature, which is cool if you can like think ahead of time. And we talked about this before. Probably hordes of dryads, or maybe even. I'm sorry, I was nearly sick in my own mouth. Tree revenants. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> and <laughs> spike revenants. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Might be a thing. Maybe. 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 <laughs> maybe. Um, and so, because uh, you don't care. See, that's, that's the other thing as well. Like, apart from dryads, that doesn't impact this army. So, like, structurally, it's not overly sound, but we'll see. Uh, but that's cool. It's useful, especially in the right situation, especially because you're not going to be stringing out your dry blocks anymore. So, having them immune to battle shock, pretty cool. Yeah. Um, and then glades. So you've got skyports now, or Hagnar temples, or enclaves. So basically, you've got a free set of rules that you can take um, to theme your army around, uh, and that's oak and brown, gnar root, heartwood, iron bark, winterleaf, dreadwood, and harvest boon. You even remember them in order. That's impressive. Uh, it's written out in order. Oh, <laughs> that's oh yeah, we're remembering re- with our brains. That's yeah. really <laughs> impressive, man. Thanks. I'm oh, like, you know, I'm. A, I'm a, uh, anyway, so that's the allegiance abilities. Um, should I? Should we burn through the command traits and artifacts? These are these are always the boring bits, especially in this book. Um, I'll try and pick out the ones. So we're not going to read them all out because some of them are just rubbish, in my opinion. Uh, so one that stands out from the aspects of war is War Singer. You add two to charge rolls for friendly Sylvaneth units wholly within twelve inches of this general. Yeah, that's cool, especially yeah. for deep striking units. Plus two to charge. As we've talked about before, there's also cogs, which is another plus two. And there's also a spell inside this book that's going to give you a plus three. Yeah. So a seven seven inch plus to a charge, you massive. Can't, you can't fail. You, yeah. I mean, you've also got access to a command point for a reroll, right? So, But the plus two, which is a double one, is, is nine, right? So you can't fail the charge. Yeah, that's true. Yes, yeah, good point. Yeah. Great Math. argument. <laughs> well, sometimes you might be doing it from further away. Yeah, well, yeah. The nine. Yeah, 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 I guess. Um, so yeah, that one I personally quite like that. I think that's something to talk about. They changed an R warrior; it's way worse. So you can't really make like a hard as nails tree lord ancient well, anymore. The oak, the oak and armor was it? Or, uh, yeah, uh, oak the, and... the command trait and the yeah. thing. Uh, so the wizards, uh, only wizards. Oh, what about Steve's job? Mm. You got uh, so you got spell sick. Oh my god! Going to sneeze. It's because it. it's because of the blossom. Just from... get it, getting over. That's it. right. <laughs> If you sneeze, I'll give you a pound. <laughs> Please don't do that. So, Glade Law, uh, add one to the casting rolls for generals while it's wholly within six inches of an awakened wildwood. That might not sound like a big deal, but actually getting is. spells off could be a thing inside this. Uh, I think so. I think so. Um, there's This one's good, Mystic Regrowth. Okay, this You can couple this with uh, um, a, a different thing later on but it's it's rubbish but it's worth reading at the end of your hero phase if the general successfully cast any spells in that phase and we're not unbound you can heal d3 wounds allocated to this general right let's talk about this we haven't 
So that you've got two characters basically inside this book that the, the way command traits and artifacts become incredibly strong is when they are either they either stack with another ability on the war scroll of a character or they're on a, such a big wound model such as a vampire lord on zombie dragon that's now ethereal yeah or you know whatever else you want to take um that it becomes really impressive you're like okay i've really like buffed up its utility so in this you've got so you've got a lariel inside this book so she can't take command traits and artifacts so she's she is what she is so that's cool but then so then you've got a tree lord ancient and you've got i mean you've also got the tree rev and the branch race but we'll move on to the side of them in a minute you've got the tree lord ancient and dirthu so when you start looking through the command traits and the artifacts you think right okay if i want to take war singer plus two charge for everything that's really cool that's a that's a trait i'll be able to do something with that but then that means that you're not making your general like this super badass so you're already now so then you don't take that and you take something that like you know uh, plus one attack or reroll one wound or something as an example and you put that on Durthu, and you think, yeah, fuck yeah, I'm going to pump up Durthu. And then there's a there's one of the uh, glades you can take him in, so he's going to get plus two attacks. And then you give him a sword, and he gets another two attacks. He's near a wildwood, and you're like, okay, he's doing loads of damage. And then what happened? And then you've spent 360 points for him? 320 points on Durthu. And what happens is a 180 point... <laughs> He also doesn't fly, so he hits oh. the chaff screen, and then a 180-point warp lightning cannon just shoots him to death because he doesn't have a, an ignore damage save. There are There's a way to get one. I mean, you could take something like Ignax Scales, but now you're reducing his utility. Yeah. So Durthu is a combat character with all of the units because he has such inherent weaknesses. I'm just going to put him to the side. He's out He's out of our competitive choices. Sorry. 340 points as well, so... It's a big investment. Yeah. Yeah. For like, I mean, if I, I know John, you don't like it when I do comparisons, but like uh, something like a Vermin Lord, which is. I like, like to compare, but I don't like to compare to Broken Shit. Okay. But uh, but the Vermin Lords flat have a five up ignore, like Mortal Wound yeah. save, right? Um, uh, you know, uh, so I just think. Or, they're uh, they're cheaper as well. They're cheaper. Yeah. But yeah, I think comparing the stuff that it's like fundamentally broken and say that stuff is shit yeah but the, but he is rubbish because a 180 yeah. point cannon can kill him at range for no return yeah yeah from alive to dead yeah against game and though yeah that's true yeah. all right but then there, there, are, there are other things what about like so shoot cast is a list at the minute right so a bunch of like uh raptors Doing the mortal wounds, even the balusters will go through him pretty nicely. Ah, I he's mean, only got twelve wounds. Yeah, no but, but uh, you also have the woods, right? To some extent, you do have the well. Yeah. So previously, all the wild woods would be down, and you'd be going first. That's the Silverneth guarantee. Silverneth players can't play like that now. Yeah, they can't guarantee that they're going first. They can't guarantee that they're like they're getting in range. They can't guarantee they're doing first turn charges. And still, their army doesn't fly. There's access once per game to pile in attack again. So they're not. They can hit a chaff screen really well. Yeah. <laughs> but there are some other things inside here. So I think Durthu's to the side. Tree Lord Ancient's where you go next, and which is why I read out the thing that gives you plus one to cast because he's a wizard and. Uh, sad news hasn't become a two cast wizard, so is three hundred or so points for casting one spell. So you might want to add plus one to that casting roll to really make sure it happens. But like you said, there's access to really cheap branch trace and branch yeah. witches, right? So there we go. I think like the the way people, without me being a, a proper silver player or anything, but as you said, like before you put the wood out to the middle, and that was your starting point, right? I think you most likely will see the wood in the deployment so now uh, yeah because i mean they're quite hardy in the wood and depending on how big the wood is and i mean i think i think they can potentially become a, like a beta army maybe like yes i like, I, I agree with you i think probably the the conclusion which which give, gives dirt a little bit more legs than he had if you're gonna go and get something with him which i agree with you he's probably worthless as that yeah but if he you, they need to come to you and you can uh, yeah, that's probably the thing about the book is like getting somewhere or getting yeah. something is like an issue. But there, are, there is there is going to be a way with range threat to do it potentially. Yeah. But what I meant is, is I, I feel like buffing Durthu is going to be a mistake. Yeah, but that's how yeah. I feel, especially if he's your general. Uh, but then, uh, so there's some artifacts of power which are cool. Um, you've got the green one, Gladius, so you can uh, pick one of the bearer's many weapons, add two to the attacks characteristics. So if you do want to do a souped up Durthu, 
There's your, there's your bad boy, right? Yeah, plus two attacks. You can also take him in one of the glades, which gets you a command ability with plus one attack. There's also... Uh, you so have the, the winter leap, right? So every six to hit becomes two wound rolls. So that's a thing as well, right? Yeah. And you can have it so you can reroll to hit um, and rerolls to wound. Uh, but yeah, we'll, we'll get to that at some point. So there is there is a way to make a very combat -y thing, but then the delivery system of the combat thing is an issue. In a game where eels move so fast and Zangor on discs move so fast and things drop down from the sky and have all the charges. Um, you, you don't, you like this army has the ability to drop out of the sky in a very specific place and charge. So that's my um, sad, sad face about it. That's, you know, that's just is what it is. I think, I just think you need to reimagine on how you play them. Yeah, which is what we were saying, right? We were yeah. saying maybe it's tree revs, maybe it's fight revs. You know, I mean, the dryads are still cheap, still super good, and now they're going to battle shock as well for free in the wood. Yeah. Those of you can come on, charge me. And then you just go bang in with shit and just fuck them up, right? Oh, wait. Did we see that then? Did they, did they lose the minus one? I'm going to go back to that. Have they lost the minus one? They've got the plus one save. Can't really remember. Let's see if I can refresh in my... Um, then you've got the relics in nature... Um, I've read all through all of these and none of them have stood out. So if it makes you feel that's basically... You've got the Acorn of the Ages, so once per battle at the start of your hero phase, you can set up an Awakened Wildwood holding than 12 inches of the bearer. So you can put another Wildwood down uh, if you want. So that's still there, which is fine. I think it will be a thing, actually. You think? Yeah. You don't... Because your leader's ability is basically using two woods to jump between each other. And you, do you really want to gamble? I mean, if you don't take it, first off, you need to take a, a tree donation. Which I'm not sure. Which I don't think I'm not sure you need to take a Trilord Ancient. Well, if you want to get another wood up, you need to get a Trilord Ancient. Yes, but then I don't. Yeah, we'll we'll, we'll get to that. I guess. Yeah. 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 Um, I agree with you. If but then the woods might be the wrong way to go. I know that sounds. Insane. I think it's. I think it's a great starting point. Like okay, this is my fort. <laughs> I built a castle. Turn one. What you do is <laughs> build a castle. You build a castle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, <laughs> turn two stay in the castle <laughs> yeah. but we'll get to that yeah. uh, I think uh, so yeah artifacts um, personally for me oh there was one actually sorry uh, another one that stood out was the life wreath in your hero phase roll dice on three plus you can heal d3 wounds allocated to each friendly sylvanith unit holy within 10 inches of the bearer if you mix that with Mar uh, uh, Alariel uh, so that's 2d3 she's got uh, every unit within 30 inches yeah. I mean it is on a dice roll but you could really heal stuff up and if you wanted to go like MSU hunters that's the thing. But the, the issue with life tanking, so if you're not familiar with that term, it's effectively where instead of using your armor, so you're rolling saves and that's your protection, it's using your, your health pool to get down quite low, but then you bring it all back up. That's what life tanking is. So this army on paper has the capacity to do it quite well. But unfortunately, what actually happens is is you take 2d3 mortal wounds on each one of your units of hunters and like they lose uh, maybe a hunter each, and you're like, okay, I've healed one wound. Hard counter to the vortex. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a hard counter to the vortex. The it's vortex a fucking is fucking trap. <laughs> it's a fucking trap. So I would say it's the same way that, w that what you're going to do is go, right, okay, yeah, Durthu, as soon as he gets what, like a couple of wounds on him, he's worse. Um, so what I'll do is I'll make sure I get loads of ways to put D3 water wounds, D3 wounds back on him. You're like, all right, yeah, fuck, yeah. I can do 3d3 wounds back on him. That's not going to help when he's fucking dead. Yeah, from just, like, pick a thing. Yeah, even, like, even the pendulum's going to... The pendulum's there in other people's lists because you're going to be fighting against... Um, I really like Sylphaneth, and I'm a little bit upset by this book, so that's why... I, I don't think it. you need to be that upset. I think it's shit. I think it's, like... You remember you said the corn book was a bit shit? I think the corn book's still a bit shit. Super good, man. Well, okay, well that's good. But like, we have different opinions, so people yeah. can hear that, right? Yeah. I don't think it's even as good as the corn book, in my opinion. I think uh, it's like I said to you before. You have these types. It's of like Iron Jaws Light. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> wow. No, it's like we have these these armies that that have this super potential that can be played like almost as an S tier army, but you have to play it. Yeah. And if you don't play it, it's just shit. And I, I think that's true for like corn. I think that's probably true for this book as well. Okay, I did. I disagree, but there might be a thing. We'll see, uh, because it doesn't have any. Uh, it's it's just really low movement, and it's the most important stat in the game. Like, it just is. Like, because it's all based around the trees, and now because you don't, you're not getting one drops. You might get like three drop armies 
it's not guaranteed you're going to be getting the drops out, right? So you can't play it like you did now. So you can't. But, but, no, still, but it's, not, it's not. You can't play it like you did. The way you move your models in that army is through the wildwoods. If you can't, like, then your movement five. I think the issue is if you can't get up new wildwoods, yeah, that that's a problem. But if you can, I think it's interesting because you have, then you have another wildwood, and you have tree remnants so you can come in from the side. You have the new and the spells from the forbidden power. Yeah, the forbidden, forbidden, forbidden power is actually a thing. But then again, uh, as stated, you haven't got many more. We'll get to the wizardy part in a minute, shall yeah. we? Uh, which is good because we're on to the spell laws. Yeah, so we got Throne of Vines. Has a casting value of five. If successfully cast, add two to the casting rolls for the caster until the caster makes a move or is set up in a different location. How do you feel about that spell? It's a weird one. Some faction have it baseline. Hashtag Skaven. Uh, but it's also... Uh, <laughs> I mean, getting plus two is strong. but To it's, cast, but not unbind. Yeah. I don't know. It, it, you will probably move anyways, like unless you're a really static player, which tends not to be good. Mm. But getting a spell to get you plus two is a bit weird, I think. Yeah. I would say. Not 100% sure about that one. Because yeah. you don't have any like really hard to cast spells, right? Do you? No, I mean, sevens. Some of them that you want maybe are sevens. Yeah. Um, which turn them down into five. Which turn them down into five. And if you know what came, it's like, uh, yeah, it's four. But, but, the, like, but also you waste you waste a spell cost on, a, on an army that unless you go all those small wizards. Mm. And still, if you go all those small wizards, have quite few costs. And if you compare it to those, like Gloom Spy, for example. Uh, but there's almost no pluses to cast, right? And, yeah. and in what is a very magic heavy game at the minute. Um, because people are like, they've got their auto unbinds because they're taking their Stormcast or their Rune Lords or whatever they're taking. Um, so they've got the access to those. Or they've just got, they're running Death because Death's the most popular faction in the game at the minute. Um, so when you think of, when you think about that, Grand Alliance, sorry. When you think about that, you think, oh, actually, no, not just Grand Alliance, sorry, faction, Legions and the Gash is the most popular one. You think about that, you think, okay, so they've got loads of pluses to unbind. So And there's not really any spells in here that are like, that's the spell. I'm not just talking about the vortex. Like, you know, have you ever seen you played against a flesh eater course guy and he doesn't get unholy vitality off, mm. and then he goes, "I'm not charging. I'm never going in again." Yeah, <laughs> and then he like waits a turn. The next turn he goes, "Unholy vitality." Okay, yeah, double, now turn, he's double turn, double <laughs> turn, <unholy vitality. laughs> the roller coaster, the emotional roller coaster yeah. when it happens. Point and click, let's go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so I, yeah, I, for me. There's not really anything in here where you think right, that's the spell I'm I'm wanting to be getting. So, you apart from maybe the spells, apart from maybe to a degree. So then you're in this kind of really interesting spot where you're like, well, well, what am I like? Okay, what am I doing? Anyway, we'll get on to the spells. Um, I don't know. I don't know about Throne of Vines personally, but it, on a Lariel, I can see that being a thing. Because it also you're only multicaster wizard, so this is literally only on yeah. her. Was it for uh, only your next cast, or is it all the, fa the whole phase? Ca no, for the caster until the caster makes a move or is set yeah, up okay. in a different location. Yeah, so you want them with several. Yeah, cast so them. your mobile combat unit uh, has to stand still. Yeah, what's the cast value on it? Five. Five. That's easy. Yeah. Range. Um, it's just it's on the caster. So it's caster itself. Uh. Yeah. Anyway, so Throne of Vines, I think, is rubbish. Unless you're taking a L'Oreal and then you want the bonuses. Still rubbish. Still rubbish, yeah. Regrowth. Because you want to cast two other spells, right? Exactly. They're right. Regrowth, uh, cast a value of five. If successfully cast, pick one friendly Sylvaneth unit wholly within 18 inches of the caster. Heal D6 wounds. That's great. Could be a one, could be a six. Cast number five. It's probably going to be in every list. It's probably, pro probably going to be all the time because you're going to want it there. Dwellers Below, great podcast. The Dwellers Below have a casting value of seven. If successfully cast, pick Gentilly, sorry, pick one enemy unit within 10 inches of the caster and visit to them and roll a number of smorgan dice equal to the number of models for that unit for each six plus the unit suffers one mortal wound made by nick hohen hmm. just like a mini purple sun i guess yeah it's it's fine like 10 inches though it's yes short. yes short range and shit so moving on deadly harvest deadly harvest casting value of six successfully cast each enemy unit with three inches of the caster d3 mortal wounds roll separately for each unit pretty cool because you increase the range of that yeah, because there's a spell to increase the range by six inches. So then you're that's the nine. You can put them on top of Bailwind. Yeah, and you've got like a little mini Croconado from a branch witch just being like, fucking let's go, which is kind of cool. Yeah, that's a thing. Yeah, put cogs next to them. 
Just like, just literally, just all the other spells around this one model, right? And just fucking go for it. No plus to cast. No. <laughs> and this one's game is going to be a score now. six, though. 50-50. Yeah, you know, everyone on my... a lot of 50-50. Like, there's a lot. Listen, this is a book. Of, what did I tell you? Like, Iron Jaws players are going to be like, well, you brought Silver and F. <laughs> I'll play you. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go. Um, uh, Skillshot says, in a world where grots and rats are better casters than tree elves. It's a perfect world, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, right, Verdur's Harmony has uh, cast value 7. If successfully cast, pick one friendly Sylvaneth unit wholly within 18 inches of the caster, visible to them. You can return one slain mod to that unit. If you pick Dryads, Tree Revs, or Spite Revs, it can be D3. What's great about this is this used to be wrapped up inside one of the battalions. Yeah. This has now gone into the core spell law, which is great. And also really good for just like popping a hunter back into a squad, which is going to be super useful. Also really nice that if you get... Your mechanics right, so you do regrowth first. So you got a unit of Colonel Hunters, let's say. A unit of Colonel Hunters, one of them's down to one wound. You get your regrowth off, and you manage to roll your three, so it's back to four wounds, which is great. Then add another unit back in there, that's great. You know, then you pop Alariel's uh, uh, ability, uh, so you heal another D three. So you could potentially get like seven wounds back into a Colonel Hunter unit, which is pretty sweet. So what you're saying basically is take big units of Colonel Hunters. So that they can't die in one turn, and then you can still heal shit back up, and maybe resurrect shit back up. Yeah, that maybe. could be that could be a thing. I really do think that could be a thing. Um, but the, again, it's the delivery system for where they're going to be. They're not they're not enlightened on discs. They're not eels. They're not. I mean, there's just so much that are faster than them. So it's going to be obvious where they're coming from. But I like what you said about even big blocks of tree revs or like. <laughs> um, <laughs> because there are threats somewhere on the board, yeah. right? Um, that your opponent has to watch out for. Uh, rats are better than Zinchik casting. It makes my head hurt, says Angle Jack. Hawkeye, yo dudes, um, is a rag and bone man in the studio. Are you a rag and bone man? John? Rag and bone man? Yeah, do you know what the rag and bone man is? No. It's a compliment. He's paying you a compliment. Nice. Yeah, <laughs> that's from Hawkeye. Uh, right, next up, Tree Song. Um, tree Song is casting with a seven. If successfully cast, pick one immune within 16 inches of the caster, within 16 inches of the Awakened Wildwood. Until the end of the turn, you can reroll hit and wound rolls once for attacks made with melee weapons that target that unit. That's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Especially if you end up going with something. That's good. That's good, actually. It's pretty good. Um, it's 16 inches, though. So within 16 inches of the caster. So yeah. it's quite short and range. And they have to see it? Uh, pick any unit within 16 inches of the caster. Within 16. Nope. Uh, no, so you don't you have can, to see it. So you can't actually cast it into a wild wound. Yeah. So that's all right. Dish. Well, something we need to talk about with the Wildwood as well. Um, I think is... the Wildwood's going to be fucking scary to go into, man. Yes, which is another thing to talk about, right? So it might be all about putting... Which is how... That's how some of their players play anyway. They put all their Wildwoods near the objectives. Yeah. Yeah, and they're like, Ooh, come over here, it's a spooky... Yeah. It's a van. It's a van that says yeah. free, we... free sweets on the outside. Yeah. yeah, and then some of their players are just stood there like, everything in here is absolutely fine. It's legit. <laughs> I have my <laughs> tax papers right here. <laughs> This is legit. <laughs> Come inside the party legit. bus. Um, the issue is, is if armies can outdrop them, is they might massively struggle to actually get guys inside the party bus um, because they might not have any party bus fuel. I know what I mean. Yeah. They'll be late to the party. Yeah, I'm just dragging this. But still, too far. because uh, it all comes down to like how. Because if it's that circle, that would probably mean if it's a circle. Yeah, and I don't know how wide it is. But it could potentially mean because was was it one inch from other tree? No, it's not scary. No, you, wait, because you could... also don't forget don't forget the key part. I can't just. It's not like I can just fucking and magically like this is this is how I win. Hello, you're a silver player and I am a grot player. I have a low drop army then your silver army. I do hand a gork. What with fucking grot. grot player are you? Yeah, but just listen. Yeah, I do hand a gork with my grots. You're fucked. Yeah. What about how's this? Yeah, I'm a, I'm a Skaven player with Norholes. Not even a skill... Any army... Any army... That, with the new, you you, oh, oh, you okay. can apply that to every player. I have a Skaven army. No, okay. You're no, fucked. It's okay. I, I've, got you, I've got you way to fuck every single player right now. Any army that can go lower than its lowest drop count, yeah, with the, uh, with, um, the new generic spells from Forbidden Power, teleport a unit near their woods. They can't teleport into their brand new woods. It's end of the fucking game. Are like, there that many one drop armies now? Not even one drops. You just got to get lower. We don't know what like like uh, like because that's what I said at the start. I think it will be an arms race for the Sylvaneth army to get as low drop as they can get. 
because they're like, I want to get my woods yeah. up. That's uh, the only way they can play. But uh, as I said, like if you use the new ones, the circle ones, yeah, uh, you could potentially place it like around a train piece and still being one inch away. Yeah. So it might not be that impossible to get it around the table, depending on how big the rape is. But uh, no, I'm not talking about. I'm not talking about putting it on the tabletop. Yeah, well, you're talking about like there's, they're they're at the place where you want to be, and now you need to shift them, right? Yeah, on the first turn, and now you're yeah. movement five, right? And then they're just like capping objectives, doing things, yeah, and like so. The, your wildwoods now are a scary place. I mean, you can awaken the wildwoods, which is a great spell on the Tree Lord Ancient, and and they awake every time we cast a spell. So yeah, something we didn't mention about them. They changed the word on that a little bit. So every time you're within it uh, and you cast a spell, um, and so you successfully cast a spell. So not like, and it's not unbound. Then it awakens and it does some more wounds, but so like, it's not on a five up anymore. No, you, you have to go near it. I, I, I'll have to go back and double check, or you can double check for us. Yeah. So spell laws, there's really nothing to sing home about, really. Tree songs, all right, I think. Um, no, like uh, the, I think yeah. virtuous harmony is the one. Like, look, that's the winner in my opinion. With a cool croak nado, virtuous harmony is where you can bring yeah. a unit back, and deadly harvest is where you can do the croak nado. I like the, I like the reroll and. Um, oh, I just got to the wildwood actually, because. Um, in combination, since it's re-roll hits and re-roll wounds, uh, you could potentially do some fishing maybe with some winterleaf fishing maybe for some extra attacks. Uh, so Tyler's just saying, Rob, that's what happened to me. Game one at Akon was uh, fucking around and boom, no space to put wild woods out because I have Gits players first turn. Uh, there you go. And Hannah Gork, 60 stabbers and they zone Very out. Very irresponsible not taking a one-drop army. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, and they just zoned out uh, the whole board. Like, So there you go. Uh, how many ways are there to get woods? There's an artifact, a metamorphosis, anything else. There's also the ability on side. Uh, I want to say three. There's three ways. Yeah. Uh, there's the uh, so you get one for allegiance. You get the acorn. You get metamorphosis, metamorphosis, and the ability on the tree lord ancient. What's the metamorphosis? Uh, that's from Alario spell. Ah. Oh. oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's a four. Uh, Huggabin says the problem we have now is you'll need to have good players yourself enough not waiting to play the army or because they know they won't have to face oh no that's not true uh, maybe I don't know um, if the hero face uh, so the wildwood we've, we've done that just double check in so then so we, we've done the spell laws so let's talk about the um, endless spells yeah so uh, sorry so you need to be holy within six of an awakened wildwood and you cast a spell and it's not unbound and then it's on a five up you take d3 um, uh, Master Kamal says uh, there's also a spell to place a wood as well thank you very much yeah so there we go so f there are uh, after the initial way there are four ways to put a wild wood back on the board yeah you got to buy all those woods um, uh, yeah so vengeful skull root yeah so uh, yes vengeful skull root so we're talking about the endless spells now so this is the new tree thing that we've seen um, advertised so uh, it is. It moves eight inches, and it is cast on a six, and you have to sit wholly within six inches of the caster. So it's got a fourteen-inch kind of effective range on the first turn. Pendulum range. Yeah, it's quite a big base as well. It's like a large oval. When the model setup player can move it, and then uh, if a unit fails a battle shop test within three inches of any models with this ability, add D three to the number of models that flee. This ability has no what? effect on units with the Sylvaneth keyword. It's all right. So combined with the, the outcast formations, 2d3 extra models that flee? Yeah, huh? that's a thing. That's a thing. If Battleshot was a thing, it would be a thing. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Strangle Roots. After this model has moved, each unit that has any models it's passed across suffer d3 mortal wounds, d6 mortal wounds, if that unit is also within three inches of an awakened wild woods. This ability has no effect on Sylvaneth keyword. That's why I think this is really good. Because if you can get your woods up, you just stick the skull root near it, and you just kind of float around there, basically. And then you're, and it's, I mean, it's not super mobile, eight inches, but it's not too bad. Um, and then just doing d6 wounds. The cast value of, was cast value was a six. Between a seven to the spell as well. Yeah, seven to the spell. It's so not yeah. terrible. Fifty fifty, and you waste the spell. It's good. Yeah, yeah. So, but it's quite cheap as well. You got the points for these. Fifty points for the thing. For the skull root, not the skull root. For the no, sorry. There we go. There we go. It's, but, yeah. but the one that is 50 points, the, uh, the Spite Swarm yeah, 5. Yeah, that, that one, 50 points. Yeah. Uh, this is 50 points. So it is set up within 15 inches of the caster, and it's cast on a 7, so it's very hard to cast. So that's why I talked about you might want those pluses to cast. I personally think this yeah. is a bit of a trap. I don't think I'd take this because it's 50 points. Um, it's a 7 to cast. You can't reliably get that off unless 
you know, you've thrown a Vines Larry out, right? So then you've got plus two, so now it's a five. And then hope the opponent doesn't unbind it. The other it. one was 40 points. Uh, sorry, yes. The, so the tree was 40 points. Yeah. I'd take the tree, especially as it doesn't hurt the Sylvaneth player. Yeah. And it's a predatory endless spell. Yeah. So um, this one, you just set it up within 15 inches and it doesn't move. At the end of the hero phases, as well as on the battlefield, the player who's set up can pick one of the effects below. Uh, this is the same. The same unit cannot be picked to be affected by this ability more than once per hero phase. So it is uh, roll a dice for each Sylvaneth unit within eight inches of this model on a two plus. Add three inches to that unit's normal moves and charge moves until the end of the turn, which is wicked. Yeah. Um, so now you do through movement seven with plus two to charge, which yeah. is pretty badass. And, and if you've got cogs up. Yeah, he's now movement nine with plus four to charge. So he's almost the speed of a regular monster. Yeah. <laughs> kind of nine is the bam. Uh, but look at the size of the fucking model. He's got these giant trees and he's movement five. He's a fucking tree. You should be glad that he can walk at all. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then shield it, roll a dice for each Sylvan Earth unit. So you can do this other one. Roll a dice for each Sylvan Earth unit holding an eight inches. Model two plus save rolls. Reroll save rolls of one for attacks that target this unit until the end of the turn. So a Mystic Shield in AoE, which is okay. Yeah. But it's 50 points. Uh, I personally don't think I'd take it. Depending on the composition of the list, uh, I'd really consider it. I th yeah. Yeah? And I'm not sure I would combine it with Cogs, maybe. I think that's a bit of overkill. But uh, this free Mystic Shield, it's always also those Nagash players, man. It's always nice. Yeah. Reeling ones. Um. Uh, but it's also it only happens it only happens on a two plus as well the extra movement so like you cast so you've got the variable of casting it the the very likely but still variable opportunity to actually do the thing. But once it's there, it's quite hard to get rid of, and it's a pretty solid buff actually for your army. Yeah, and it's fifty points, and fifty points isn't. I mean, there's things you want. I mean, you want Geminids, you want. A bunch of things. Well, I the, think I, the, I'd rather just take this instead of because you add three, right? Not two. Mm. So I'd rather if I, I'd rather take this instead of cogs because cogs affect my opponent as well, and this only affects you. So there's that argument, right? Yeah, it depends on the the pro yeah, and it's cheaper in the cogs. Yeah, that's true. All right, and then you got the glade worm, um, which is only silver wizards can attempt to summon glade worm. Uh, cast value of seven successfully. Cast with six inches of the caster, and it moves eight inches and can fly. Uh, and it is a predatory in the spell. So, um, after this model is moved, roll the dice for each enemy unit within one inch of it. On a three plus unit, suffers D3 more wounds. This ability has no effect on Sylvaneth. And then Healing Mist. After this model is moved, roll the dice for each Sylvaneth unit, holding within six inches of it. On three plus, heal D3 wounds. Now, this one's good because it's a predatory spell that you just don't care about. Like it's fire and forget. You put it on the board and you're like, I don't care. The issue is, like you said, that you want Geminids, right? You Maybe you want Cogs. Maybe you don't want Cogs. Maybe you want Shackles. Maybe you want Palisade for some weird reason. Like, whatever you want to cast as an endless spell. Or maybe you want the Forbidden Spells, Forbidden Power Spells, because you want to, like, teleport some dudes. Yeah? You want to scoot, scoot the toot, toot boat, right? Mm -hmm. Everyone wants to toot, toot the scoot, scoot boat, right? <laughs> so maybe that's your plan. But you don't have loads of casting in this army. If you take a Tree Lord Ancient, you've got one. If you take... And what's really cool is if you take um, a Branch Wraith, you've got one... It's 80 points. But then if you took a Fungoid or a Gracier, yeah, a Fungoid only once per battle but can have another cast, right? Yeah. Yeah? So you, you, you're right. You're not going to always. But you, when you're doing Ender Spells, you only cast one per wizard anyway. So when you're doing that, your Fungoid does... Your Fungoid does your the one Fungoids spell. are great, man. Fungoids are great. They're so good. But multi-cast wizards... These are all good spells-ish. We need to remember that. Uh, they're 80 points, so basically... What, a Branch Wraith? Yeah. So, basically, you can take that and end the spell, and you're at the, the price of a normal wizard at 120-ish. So, you basically can take it and a spell for free if you compare it externally to other wizards. If you compare it to old-school wizards. If yeah, you compare yeah. it to new-school wizards, then not really. Like, And you can look at more than well, one. Well, the Gracie book. is 120, right? Gracie is 120, but let's not even look at that. You go to Art Region... Yeah, 200, but you summon... No, it's 40 points because he summons... It's 40 like, points because he summons a, an entire unit and he casts two spells. But yeah, 200 yeah. seems fine. Great here, we all know, is criminally undercosted. Yeah, yeah. But then you take a Vermin Lord, as an example. Criminal Again, Lord criminally undercosted. But two cast wizards with 12 wounds. You've got a Fungoid who's... But then let's go small. We've got Fungoids who are 90, but can once per battle cast two. And they've got a yeah. four plus... And they've got saves against mortal wounds. Yeah, 
So there's like there's like well a- these guys they they have the woods. I mean they have one wood and you can't shoot them. And most of the endless spells don't need visibility to be cast. So you have that like the defense, even though it's not on the war scroll. You still have that defense. You do right? have the shooting. Yeah, you're right. You do have that. De- you do have and, the shooting. And if you defense. let your opponent charge them, I'm not sure you're doing it right because <laughs> you should have stuff in front of them, right? Maybe. 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 But I, I, I I'd say that you're gonna have a trouble screening personally because I don't think you're gonna get a lot of forest down. OJ, uh, thank you for subscribing. But I'd be interested to see. I can't wait to actually get on the tabletop and actually mm. see how this works. I'm not trying to be doom and gloom. I'm just like just trying to give a fair. I'm very positive. Yeah, I, I'm not about this. I think this is worse than the book before. Um, like in what you can do with it. Um, Prob- as, in, as in its potential to win tournaments is what I'm designed by. Mean by worse. Um, but we haven't finished yet, so don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. Oh, Strigoi, thank you for subscribing. Appreciate that. Uh, thank you to everyone who subscribes. You can use some cool emojis in other channels and all that. Oh, Big Goldfish, also thanks for subscribing. Uh, should we talk about the units then? Yeah. Yeah? Right, first up, Alariel, the queen herself. My princess, my love, my heart. Yeah, you gorgeous, wonderful woman. Didn't you sleep with like everybody in the old world? Uh, <laughs> you know, that's that's uh, I five Alariel. No, I think Alariel did a pretty good job as well. Do you know what? Let's let's do something to Alariel, which all silver players will be upset about. Let's move on to Dreicher first. Mainly because I can't find Alariel. Uh, so movement nine. In your memory. Uh, from my memory, she's got ten wounds with three up saves, so she's solid defense wise. But this is where she gets badass. She's got a colony of flitter furies and. And let me just double check. The unmodified, she's got both, is named. She's armed with, she has both. She has both. She has both. She What's has a bit s- weird now when, when, when a named character only had one or the other? Yeah. Yeah, it's true. So she's she's got into the badass t- t- territory, but she's 320 points. She's expensive. She's expensive. But she's got 10 attacks with her uh, colony of Flitter Furies, which is fours to hit, threes to win, rend one one damage. So that's already good. And then in combat, she's got Slashing Talons, which, before she gets wounded, is six of them, forced to hit threes to wound, minus two and two damage. It's not bad at all. I know. Um, I mean, very much, when we compare some other monsters, not great. But she's an old school monster, I'd describe her as. Like, oh yeah, she's, a, yeah, she's all right. But then the Swarm of Skirlings, ten more attacks, um, hitting on threes initially, fours, no render one damage. So you got like you got a lot happening there. She's not going to, I don't think she would. You have some potential fishing you could do there. Because if you get the reroll to hits, and you have 30 attacks, depending on your mood, right? Yeah. So you have 30 attacks, rolling for fishes for sixes, you get well, six. Well, no, you currently have got 26, but but if you use her mercurial aspect, yeah. Yeah, at the start of the battle round, eat, declare whether this model is enraged, enraged or embittered. I like this at the start of the battle round as well, because like, you can flip it then, if she's already locked in combat, for instance, and go for some yeah. more attacks. The Revenant ability below, so enraged, so uh, her shooting attack gets 20 attacks. Her combat attack gets 20 attacks, one or the other. Yeah. Um, but that's just brilliant. So, so what I would do here, like you have that spell where you re-roll to hit and re-roll to wound. Because every six is a mortal wound, right? Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, so um, is you're talking about her deadly infestation. The unmodified hit roll for attacks me with a colony of Flitter Furies only. Um, or a swarm? No, it's both. It's yeah. both. Yeah. So if you have re-roll, right? You have you have those thirty dice when she's in the right mood. Yeah. Roll them. Pick out the sixes. Roll them again. Yeah. Should average around ten, maybe ten mortal wounds, maybe. No. So you so you'll have thirty attacks. You'll average five mortal wounds. Um, oh, that's six. Uh, six, yeah, six mortal wounds. And then yeah. if you got some re-rolls on her, maybe you would get yeah more. from that spell, right? Uh, yes. Well, from her spell. No, the lower. So you cast it on them, so you get to re-roll hits and. Was it only in the combat phase? No, there's no there's there is a spell. Reroll once to hit, reroll once to wound. Yeah, okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. Because um, yeah, oh, there's some potential fishing to do at least. Yeah, but no, definitely oh, I mean, six more wounds out of the model. Sweet. Yeah, yeah like for some from shooting, some again. from combat. That's great. I'm going to call like, it ten mortal wounds. Yeah, you're going for ten. All right, yeah. sweet. Positive. So, uh yeah. Uh, so I, I think she's great. Three twenty points is a lot. Yeah. It's a lot, but she's also a wizard. Yes. So an actual combat two, character that's one, a two, wizard. One, two. Oh, how many do you think she can cast? I hope two. She can attempt to cast one spell. Hmm. <laughs> I was really close. You were really close. A very educated guess. It was. Um, 
Uh, Strigoi says, just want to say well done, guys. This isn't a lot of your work and doing a pro job. I love the banner. Thank you so much, Strigoi. That's badass. I don't have a CG. Pretty sure it was Alario cheating on Finnebar with Tyrion, having their bastard daughter captured by Manfred to start the whole end time sig- saga in Sigmar Blood. That's she's, she's the best. She is the best. Otherwise, we wouldn't be here. So, what do you think about Dreitcher overall, John? I like her. I, I oh, wait, she's... I haven't read out a spell. Sorry. Sorry. She also has a spell, Primal Terror. Casting value 6, successfully Ooh. cast for 2d6, each enemy within 10 inches of the caster with a bravery characteristic lower than this suffers d3 mortal wounds and you roll separately for each unit and bravery, yeah. So, so it's an AoE one. Yeah, it's an quite, AoE. Quite good, actually. You can combine with like Wild Woods and combine with other spells that's out there. Can yeah. have some cuts going on. Yeah, if you had her like whipping around the wood near the, uh, I've already forgot the name of it, the floating tree, yeah, yeah. then there's a ton of mortal wounds and there. And the snake. Yeah, and the snake. Yeah, the snake to heal her up. Um, yeah, and you want to go... Yeah. It's 10 wounds, though. The problem is, with life tanking, 10 wounds is quite low. Two endless, two predator endless spells in between phases, plus an arcane bolt and a couple of other things. She basically could be fucking dead. People before. dispel far too little. Yeah, but everyone out there, dispel, dispel endless spells. Dispel endless spells. Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> they can be... Geminids. Uh, and, and Jack Shadow points out, uh, hey Chris, by the way, uh, Jack Shadow says Dreitcher is a lot better than an ancient for a point, and I think I'd agree with that. Mm. I, if you decide to take it, it's whether or not she's worth taking at all, yeah. but I would say the ancient's not worth taking at all. It, it all comes down to how easy it is to place down those trees, I'd say. Uh, but me personally, I love the Dreitcher model. I think it's one of the strongest one in the range. She's a cutie, yeah. I'm not going to lie. Um, I mean, now she has access to both the weapons. Which gives her some more legs that she didn't used to have, right? Yeah. There's no flies on her. No. Nope. <laughs> it's a lot of flies. <laughs> They're flitter furious. Yeah, sure. <laughs> uh, flitter furious. Alariel, 16 wounds. Yeah, three plus save. She moves 16, so she's always been a badass baller. Uh, and she's bravery 10. She's got a spear of Kurnoth. Uh, it has got a range of 30. Hits on a three. Wounds on a two. Minus two D6 damage. I'm sure every Silver Neck player in the world will tell you you're never going to hit. Uh, or you're never going to wound. One of the two. It's going to let you down all the time. Uh, when you do finally get it through, you're going to do one damage. But sometimes you will just nuke a unit. And initially hitting on the three is pretty sweet, I've got to say. Yeah. Um, so, big shout there. Uh, this model can fly. Um, uh, she's got the the Talon of the Dwindling. If the other model hit roll for an attack made by the Talon of the Dwindling, is a six. It inflicts D3 mortal wounds on the target. Um, and then you've got Life Bloom. In your hero phase, you can heal up to D3 wounds allocated to each friendly Sylvaneth unit, wholly within 30 inches. So that's pretty great, especially on those multi wound models, of which you have three. Um, <laughs> um, uh, you can always use some mercenaries. You could. Oh, oh, no, it's only healed Sylvaneth units, so. though. Um, sweep and blows add one to hit rolls for attacks made with the model's great antlers if the target contains five or more models um, oh yeah I didn't read out what he does sorry so you've got the talent of the dwindling which is four attacks threes fours no rend one damage and then you've got the great antlers of the fucking beetle five attacks hit on fours though which is really tough in this minus one to hit world of Age of Sigma. wounds on a three minus two but does that weird five damage 25 potential right 25 potential damage Let's give it. You see some reroll hits, which you can yeah. get in this book. You can get all flat reroll hits inside this book. So that's pretty cool. I mean, you have you have combat monsters in the book. You have way cheaper combat monsters than, than Alariel in the book that potentially, arguably, could do more damage than she does in, in combat. Mm-hmm. But she has the reach in her movement. She's fast. She has sixteen, man. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. She also flies, which is a bit weird because everybody will see her. <laughs> which you don't really want on a model that doesn't have any mortal wounds saver well so uh, you you said this at the top right and let's talk about that for a second there I don't know if there's been as me- maybe when Scryer were popping up in Gouchfire and they were doing mortal wounds for days but I don't think there's ever been so much chip damage coming from mortal wounds so what I mean by chip damage is just a variety of sources of mortal wounds Sometimes it's done from Boingrots on the charge or skull crushers on the charge. Sometimes it's done from like a ton of Ender spells just floating around, as well as normal spells. Mm. Then you've got a couple of like end of the combat, roll a two plus, mortal wound, little mortal wound here, little mortal wound there. Oh, you moved, mortal wound. Yeah, just all over the shop. And the Sylvaneth are like, they're like, that's their kryptonite. 
That's their narrative. That's their that, fire. In the, same, in the same way that the destruction narrative is four plus to hit, <laughs> their narrative is they, they can't take mortal wounds. Right? They can't. And that should never change. The same yeah. with Stormcast. Oh, same, yeah, that's true. But yeah, they, they just cannot handle mortal wounds in any way, shape or form. And arguably, they've got a pretty good stat line defensively. Like, all their monsters are three pluses on their saves, which is pretty good. Yeah. Like, even uh, dry, Dryads, they've changed it now with Dryads that you get... Plus one save, so you've got a base save of five. Plus one save if they have ten or more models. Used to be twelve. Uh, so four plus save is pretty good. Yeah. Did we see whether or not they're still minus one to hit if they're near the Wildwood? Or the Awakened Woods, sorry. I've got to learn to say that. I can't remember the Dryad Wash Girl. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> I will double check. Let me double check. Um, Some vanilla sky, actually. No, they're still there. Blessing the Forest is still there, which is good. I was worried. Yeah. Uh, so Dryads are basically unchanged. Um uh, oh, uh, one of the best Silver Knight players in the world is here, uh, Laurie Huggett Wigger Wild. Wow. Yeah, yeah we go. Uh, but so is OJ, and I think OJ is actually better because he played Silver Knight Bobo and Laurie played Corn. So congratulations, OJ. You're now the best. Um, there you go. No, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Decision reached. Um, uh, so you've got Liver and Battle Ram, roll a dice for each enemy unit uh, within one inch of this model uh, after this model makes charge. On a four plus, the unit suffers D3 mortal wounds. So when she charges, she can do D3 wounds. Mortal wounds. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, but it's fine. It's a nice little extra. Uh, talking about mortal wound chip damage, right? There's an example. There is loads of it in this book, to be fair. The, uh, there's loads of it in every book. Everything, like everything we talked about. There's mortal wounds just all over the shop, right? But Not... everything we talked about in this book is like, oh, D3 mortal wounds. Oh, D3 mortal wounds. Uh, Servitor in the chat says AOS for girls, true story. But that would be good if we had more women playing, so yeah. I hope so. <laughs> Thumbs up. Uh, Solar Morphe, once per battle at the end of your movement phase, you can summon one of the following units to the battlefield 20 dryads, 10 tree revs, 10 spire revs, 3 colonel thunders, a branch tree, or a tree lord. What do you think? It's good. Yeah, that's good. It's yeah. useful. Make, it reduces her cost down because she's very expensive at 600. 660? 660. So a tree lord now is 200 points, which FYI is 200 points more than you should pay for one, as in you should never take one. <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, I think you're going to see Colonel Thunters go down all the time. Um, Leo is the new king, to be fair, says OJ. All right, Leo, you're, uh, yeah, Leo is the new king. He went 5-0. Uh, uh, Bobo actually with Sylvaneth so defensive Dreadwood fucking take that yeah that's good that's um, good to see right next up um, magic so you can summon a unit so she basically her cost is offset so 660 points you can take off the 200 points for Colonel Thunters there so she's really only 460 points yeah of and this is where it's important she's your only multicast wizard she can attempt to cast three spells so it's one of the very one of the few three in, spells. Three spells. One of the few units in the game that can cast three spells. Yeah. Um, that also means that obviously she's going to be able to unturn, uh, attempt to unbind three spells. So I would say that Alariel's and depends what build you're going for. Um, but I would like. She sounds like a strong pick. She probably would be the first thing that goes in my list, and then I would start to then almost to the side. I just start six sixty points down. Look at my list. Decide what I was writing, and then go. Do I want to take her out and then keep adding into that combo that I've made? Or, because utility on her own, it's a giant heal. You don't need to take any healing spells. That's pretty good. Like, you don't have to take any of the endless spells or anything like that. Uh, she's another, well, she's 200 points, so she's really 460. So that's quite cool. She's fast. She can do combat and the unbind. Just, just go Cogs, another spell, man. Plus five move. That's 16, 21 move. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, no, I, I think she's an in interesting choice, and I, I, I think she will see a lot of playtime. Hopefully, I'm sure she doesn't have that uh, um, that mortal wound save, but there's plenty of healing in the book. There is so life tanking. Yeah, and I mean, I'm there sure is plenty if, though. There like, is you, no. You ha now you have to stack it. You have to. So she has to cast regrowth, which means you're not being offensive. Yeah, regrowth. Yeah, D six. Yeah, so three point five on average. Her own thing. D3, so The little two, worm? So 5.5. The little worm, D3. If it's in range with you, D3. And uh, there's another thing as well? There's an artifact. It's another D3. Yeah. So I think there's another thing as well. So potentially, so potentially on average... No, let's not even do average. Max. So yeah, you've healed 15 back. Which is sweet if she goes down to one wound. Yeah. Because um, yeah. you've got a 6 plus 4D3. Or 3D3. I just... But I just, you don't have to be that bipolar. Like... 
she could be here and be happy. Could yeah, yeah, she could have taken seven wounds, be yeah. back to four. And that, and that would like basically give her a five up, I guess, but you have to work for it. Yeah. And so, and so there's some experience, uh, Silver players in the chat. My experience is she just gets nuked in a turn. You Like, life tanking isn't a thing because she's just not resilient enough. Most importantly, because she doesn't ignore Rend and she doesn't have a mortal wound save. Yeah. Which is why the Vampire Lord and Zombie Dragon is so horrible, because he's got a three-up save that ignores Rend and he's re-rolling ones on his save. And then when you nuke him, like he also has like another like a natural healing combat as well. And nuking him is mortal wounds, in my opinion. Whereas Lariel's like, if you're like minus two, like Rend on something, Lariel just starts just fucking falling to pieces. So Laurie in the chat says she gets one shotted a lot, and then he's doubled down and said a lot. But well, didn't she get one shot by a squig when Laurie played her? <laughs> Squigs can fly, OG Laurie. Says, People just need to go all in, uh, and she dies pretty easy in the current yeah. meta, which I'd agree with. Yeah, yeah, I think I think you're right. I think you're right. But but isn't couldn't like a a, a tree or ancient mm. with an ethereal amulet be a thing? Because uh, then, then you take damage. You usually take damage from vortex or or geminids or whatever. But that is the type of damage that can actually heal up. Agreed. But it, so it's got the reason. It, it, it all comes down to those like small fractions of change, which is what the game's so interesting about. Right? It makes the game so interesting. So the difference between the Vampire Lord and Zombie Dragon and the Tree Lord Ancient. Tree Lord Ancient's got twelve wounds. The Vampire Lord. 16. It's got 14. 14. So being able to life tank, I know it doesn't sound like a lot, two wounds, but going down to one wound and bringing D6, then D3 back is massive. And then you can, like, compare to, like, because that already the Tree Lord would be dead. So, you know, if that was a, if that was a thing that, we, and we rarely see it, we rarely see life tanking work overly well in the game. Stuff hit too hard, eh? Yeah, stuff hits too hard. Like, and you can pick a thousand things, and I'm not comparing it just to broken stuff. Just, just a bunch of stuff hits quite hard in the game, relatively. Um, but anyway, so Metamorphosis uh, has a cast of value of seven. If successfully cast, pick one enemy within sixteen inches of the caster that is visible to them, and roll a number of dice equal to the casting roll for each four plus that unit suffers one more wound. In addition, if the unit is destroyed by a mortal wounds inflicted, you can put one awakened wildwood terrain feature wholly within twelve inches of the last model from that unit slain, and more than one inches away from the model. Now, this is quite a cool way to get a wood up. Yeah, I think personally, sixteen inch range is quite nice as well. Yep, I, I th- that's I, good. That's good actually. Yeah. Every four up here. Yeah, every four up. Six yeah, of, of the casting value, and it's cast on a seven. Hard to cast. No pluses to cast. Should be hard to cast. Yeah. Should be should, Yeah, but it, it is hard to cast. Yeah. Um, and then command ability, Giran's Wrath. So this has been changed. Use this command ability at the start of the combat phase. If you do so in that phase, you can reroll wound rolls of one for attacks made by Sylvaneth units while they are wholly within 14 inches of a friendly model with this command ability. Not forgetting that Colonel Thunters extend out the range of command abilities around them because they've got a special rule. Mm-hmm. Um, so Colonel Thunters effectively and also Dryads, which is pretty cool because Dryads get a plus one to hit in your turn. So hit yeah. on threes, wound on fours, but rerolls. That's not too that bad. still will be there? Huh? They're yeah. still there. Okay. They're still there. Yeah. Um, uh, so yeah so the, the silver players in the chat just all agree that Alariel gets one shot a lot so Alariel is cool she's very expensive could she, it be that all silver players are bad players <laughs> <laughs> change my mind <laughs> uh, right let's get on to the battle line units now so we've got dryads uh, they've got five up save move seven and they got one wound is that do they, they've always moved seven they've always been fairly quick you do get a branch nymph now um, uh, one unit is a branch nymph and add one to the attack characters that models wrecking talents they've got two inch range and they've got two attacks each fours fours no render one damage but dryads are brilliant brilliant in close combat before we get into the battalions you can take them in before we take pick an environment like whatever we get about to talk to dryads are wicked um, uh, and I think everyone will agree with that. that those are my thoughts you played against dryads much John? yeah what do you think? you need the tools to deal with them uh, OJ says get another guest uh, uh, Laurie says get another guest <laughs> <laughs> Laurie says can we start a GoFundMe for that? <laughs> And Tyler says, I'll just ignore that and say I love you, John. <laughs> love you too, man. <laughs> um, so they've still got the minus one to hit if they're wholly within six inches of the Awakened Wildwood, which is a big nerf um, because... It you, you, used to be within, right? It used to be just, yeah, just within. Yeah. So now you have to be wholly within to be minus one to hit. That's a, like, It's a big nerf. Again, you're only battling around where you do. You can't hand a Gork and kind of like... You can't block. You can't run Zangor like... 
I think the Mac, I'm not sure, I'm just checking, but I'm pretty certain the fastest you can get Zangor to go are four and a half miles. Is that the maximum movement? Zangor's? Yeah. No, uh, Fast. Four and a half miles. <laughs> I don't know. We do kilometers now. <laughs> Is that fast? 32 furlongs. Um, well, but unfo- which is nice because it's not quite as long as the 22 furlongs uh, of Plague Bearers. That's fast, man. Yeah, they are, they are fast. Yeah, uh, yeah Zengor Jack, 16 inches for Zengors and Beasts. Um, so you can create like a net or a swamp list if you've heard about me yeah. talking before that on the show. So just basically just run up and get in your opponent's grill early. Really nice. I think a lot of people try and do that against Skaven at the minute. Um, we saw it done so well in Beasts of Chaos list before. Um, so Dryad's getting that little bit of nerf that that can't net out some people didn't like that though and they thought it was abusive I agree but you could just take the one drop off them and then it's a lot harder to do but you know anyway Um, and then they've got the Enrapturing Song so in your at the start of your combat phase pick an enemy within 3 inches of the unit add 1 to hit rolls uh, for that unit which is cool so they would be hitting on 3's and then Impenetrable Thicket add 1 to the save rolls you've got 10 or more models so 4 up save and they're 100 points each and you get 30 of them for 270 points so it's a wicked little block yeah. for holding objectives and 30 of them is going to dish out 60 attacks potentially hitting on 3's wounding on 4's and there are ways to get them extra attacks and there are ways to get them to re-roll to well, you, and re-roll to wound. I mainly take them for the control, right? The board control and the... Well, they don't have the board control they once did. No. Ah. It depends about the Wildwoods, mate. That's the issue. Like, that's what I'm saying. That's why this army is so... It's... It, yeah, if, if it's holding with him for the minus one, yeah. Then that rule becomes a bit bit harder to play around, for sure. Yeah. Look, what's good is, is if you are a Sylvaneth player... Like, Sylvaneth players are the best objective players in the game. That's just a fact. Because their entire game plan is moving around objectives. Like, because they can only do that thing. Like, no matter how many Wild Wars you've ever seen on the board, they've only ever been somewhere near objectives. And they've had to, like... It's because they've been all over the fucking board, man. <laughs> <laughs> but some of their players are just like this. They're like, okay, we're playing the game. Right. And, and then the other guy's like, I wonder where we're going to battle. We're going to battle in the middle or over there. Are you coming for my stuff? And the silver player's like, we're fighting near this objective, dickhead, because this is where our forests are. You're like, do you want to come out? They're like, no. You're like, come out. Go away. <laughs> <laughs> Leave me alone. <laughs> So it, it really does depend on how it's going to... It's so vital. And with not having one drop so accessible now, like, I'm going to be very interested to see mm-hmm. what they do. Um, so that's Dryads. Uh, we've done Lariel, which is cool. Dreitcher we've done. Um, so let, Branch Wraith and Branch Witch, I'm just going to quickly try and find. They've escaped my memory. <laughs> Branch Witch. I'm uh, no, Branch Witch has become a combat badass. Right, so five wounds with a five up save. Right, always in cover, can't be shot, and move seven, pretty quick. Um, so you've got the ability is uh, Fury of the Forest. Add one to the hit rolls for attacks made by this model while it's holding within six inches of the awakened wood, and it's got two attacks, hitting on fours, wound on threes, no rend and two damage. Then you've got quick tempered. Add two to the attacks characteristics of this model's green sword scythe if there are any wounds allocated. Right. Crystal so, Gore, watch out. Yeah, hold on. Look, four attacks, and then they can be hit on threes, wound on threes. No rend, <coughs> but doing two damage. There are other ways to give them plus attack. I'm pretty certain I can get a Branch Witch up to like nine attacks if she's taken one wound. Only one wound. Would you rather just put that investment on a on an actual combat guy? <laughs> well, there are no actual combat guys in this book. <laughs> Hello, darkness. <laughs> <my old friend. laughs> Come into my forest again. <laughs> I hope I get to do all my spells. <laughs> but I probably won't. But, it, but it's 80 points and is a wizard. Yeah. And it can attempt to cast how many spells do you think, John? One. Eight. One, yes, correct. 80 uh, points for a wizard is cheap. Yeah, 80 points No is matter fine. what you say, man, it's cheap. Yeah. You can't compare it to the f- fucking mad lad fungoid. No. <laughs> <laughs> the mad lad fungoid. Yeah. Because he's the best, right? <laughs> So not, all, all the grace here, who's literally just a dickhead he's in a one, Ferrari. You, you get two, almost two of those for one grace here, though. A grace here is kind of like, uh, like a guy that would like, you know, like if you bumped into him in the street and like maybe knocked his coffee or something. Yeah, he, he would, he would turn around and he would just get his wallet out and he would just give, some, he just turn to someone and go, "Here's a thousand pounds. Punch that man in the head." He would even do it himself because he's such a twat. Yeah, uh, that's just how I feel about grace is. They are twats. They are twats. <laughs> 
Um, uh, also, Lewis Sloan says, anyone want to buy a silver leather army? Ask it for a mate. Look, it might be fine. Don't. Um, Don't. Look, no. we'll work it out. Look, this is just the first impression. Like, you have to change how you play. Yeah, well, that's all. That's already been true. You can go on playing as you did, but also, you probably lose. And also, loads of people play Iron Jaws. So you can play against those guys, like games three, four, five. Ah, <laughs> uh, no, no, no. There's too much doom and gloom. Also, no, let's get, no, I'm, it's no doom or gloom. It's like a fair review, I think. Uh, but, <laughs> but while I'm asking, uh, everyone in the chat who is uh, a Sylvaneth player, um, please let me know what you think of the book so I can like give some like fair, because you think it's fine, John. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's like, I think it's worse than the Corn and Fire Slayers book. I think it would be maybe more fun, fun to play against it. Um, it's the same silver deck. It's the same no, hardwood, John. Not. The thing that you don't like is the same thing. There will be 30 fucking trees on the board, but now they'll look nicer. Don't think it will be 30 trees on the board. Well, no, they won't. There'll be 12. Because they won't fit them. You, yes, that's true. They also won't get the turn to get the, put them out. So you're right, there'll only be one. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, up here, 4D chess you're playing. Got him. <laughs> nah, Laurie oh. likes the book. Yeah. Um... um OJ says, stick with it. They'll be solid builds. Um, and then Massacre says, looking forward to Crimbobo when Silver Death players keep winning. Uh, and Rob loses his mind. <laughs> Fuck. Every single time. Every time. I think Thingy are good. Fire Slayers are good. I said this before. Um, and I also said that both of the two silly books were good. So, Which silly books? Just gave it a fresh year, of course. The silly books. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they were yeah. good. Uh, so, Branch Wraiths. Yeah, um, same thing. So they can cast Raz to Wrath. Uh, they can uh, cast a value of seven. You can put ten dryads out and summon them uh, near an awakened wood. Uh, it can only cast one spell. But I do like the concept of building a little combat branch witch one time. Just fucking going out, being like, you're fucked. The little engine that could. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> like, I don't know. If, one time I played against Nathan and he had a rude lord. Not a rude lord, sorry. An unforged, Ooh. which is a dispossessed character, which he put command abilities on, four prayers, an artifact, a bunch of other stuff. And he literally nuked an entire like chaos unit I had at one point. Yep. I was, it that was amazing. He's definitely. also killed Nagash before, that little yeah. unforged. But it was stewards. Huh? Oh, it wasn't hard. Uh, Lewis Stone says, honestly, it would have been better if we had the other spells and kept the old books. <laughs> I don't disagree. Uh, Digital King, honestly, can someone tell me, would there be any point in just taking one set? Is there teleportation? Uh, you have to get at least two. Yeah, to be, able to, to be able to teleport from one wood to, <laughs> to another wood, wood, you have to have two woods. Yeah. And, it, and, and they've intentionally made it that it's... Anyway... I don't want to be a dick about it. Like, it's just I think, like... I think the new woods look way more friendlier to play in. They do, but they also are just taking your money because it's a Silver Death Wildwood They're going to take scheme. our money anyway. Right. But, yeah, but don't you, what would you rather buy? Some cool new models or nine woods? If they're sweet woods, I'll buy some woods. You buy some, but I mean, would, you buy, would you buy six? I mean, you're talking to Swede, like, I don't know, like, biggest export is woods, so probably wouldn't buy woods. You wouldn't buy... <laughs> So more like Japan. A lot of woods are going to be in Japan. Now, I, I mean, they're all I, in the fucking sea in China at I the minute. Know, so I, I haven't really grasped like how how it will look and like how many because their goal should be to to bring the amount of wild woods down that you see at the table, right? Anyway, let's just move on from the wildwood chat. I don't know. I just. It's going to be what it's going to be. I just think it's a shame that they didn't because transportation. I would have done it like th this. These new ones are way harder to transport. Way harder. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, yeah, because you can't. Yeah, I would have done it like this. I take a tree, and then I just have a zone around that tree. So, it's, so it's basically a marker, right? I personally, and would. then I would do that for every single terrain piece that a faction have in the game. Mm. It's just a marker, and then you measure a certain area around it. Mm. I personally would have, um, if someone's out there and is like a really solid 3D printer, but not a 3D printer, the, the you know, the mats that, so frontline game mats, those sorts oh, of yeah, things. Yeah. I would just get the shape, <coughs> get them. They and, do that for uh, warmer horse terrain, like when it's 2D. Yeah. Like, and I know that's, I know that, that's, and I agree, I like the cinematic nature of the game, but there's a bunch of the, but almost like, especially, I mean, I'm super lucky I live in the UK and Warhammer was across the road. For so, now. For now. For now. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think uh, what would be 
you know, like some of these guys, like we just had the notorious GT happen in New Zealand, and like at least two pretty solid, so like, well, so Dan Short's travelled over, he's got a silver earth army, he had to travel, a couple of other guys have silver earth armies they brought from Australia, like they've got to travel, if you go to Adepticon, they've got to travel with armies, even yeah. just sticking an extra box in your car can be a lot, before you talk about taking stuff on planes, you, John, have got, um, you've had, there's been an Eidneth army of yours in the UK for like a year, and you're like, oh, am I going to get it home, I'm going to have to get an extra like spot on the plane. So having your army plus a fucking other army's worth of terrain in a box, that's a lot for those guys to deal with, I think. Not the in-game effect, anyway. Playing Sylvaneth is highly optional. It is optional. <laughs> no, right. but, but, but uh, yeah. traveling with, with the trees is a pain. Well, that's actually another thing as well that OJ's just put up. A nationwide tree hire service for tournaments is yeah. not a bad shout. Nope. Like, each tournament just has, like... We, we, won't even we can it. only have... You never eight. play with the trees anyways. You just need those thingies. Yeah, they just, we just have like... We can only allow eight Sylvaneth players to come to this tournament. You probably won't ever see that many anyway, because it looks rubbish. But, um... <laughs> <laughs> the floors are salt. The ceiling is salt. The walls are salt. Yeah, we need national tree pools. So people can travel over from other countries and be like, oh, I'm coming over, I'm going to play Sylvaneth. Like, cool, you can have one of the... Tree allotments. I'm going. Yes. I don't need to do any more podcasting. I've finished. That's... It's not a bad idea, actually. It's a good idea. Yeah? And there should be shitloads out there. You're talking about tree farms? Yeah. That's what you're talking about? Yeah. Rent yeah. the tree. Uh, OJ says, I'll be there at 6am hiring the lot. So OJ's just going to be there with like a basket. Like, Anyone want a silver death wildwood? Um... <laughs> right, we'll move on. So the Branch Wraith can summon. That's fine. That's five good. wounds, five That's a good save. spell. It's a good spell and really useful utility-wise, especially for like um, screening, backfield objectives. So you can put like, it's a seven to cast, so that's tough. Yeah. Um, but being able to put like 50 dryads on the board, it's really useful. Yep. So solid. Um, uh, so I expect there to be a Branch Wraith in every army. So do I. Good. Mandoli says the Sylvaneth Tree uh, Painting Initiative will combat climate change in the mortal realms. <laughs> That's good, yeah. Uh, so then Tree Revs, um, they've got a five-up save, they've got a wound each, they come in units of five, and the boss has a protector glaive, and everyone else has enchanted blades. They've got two attacks each, hit on fours, wound on threes, rend one and two damage, although the boss does two damage. Yeah. Now, I've always been a little bit uh, against these because... 100 points for five wounds just has always felt a bit much. But either I've softened over time. Interesting choice. Um, <laughs> or these aren't good still. But there's something John said earlier that I was like, oh, maybe a unit. I mean, a max unit is 420 points, maybe. So that's 30 of them. 40. Uh, 30 is a max. 30, maybe. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, yes, get... four hundred and twenty. Oh, thank you very much, Laurie. So it's actually one in four. So, so if you had thirty of these guys, um, then one in four, one, one in, four? in five, one in five. Hold on, six guys. One in one model in this unit can be a Sion. Add two attacks to the characters to that mo enchanted blade. A Sion can be armed with a protected glaive instead of an enchanted blade. So one model in this unit. So you can only have one model with it, I think. Oh, he was talking. Oh, he's talking about the piss out my reptile dysfunction. Oh, sorry. Yeah, because I can't get trees up. <laughs> Please click that and put that on Pornhub. Um, <laughs> uh, so, yeah, so do you see, what, 420 for 30 of them. Yeah. Man, that's... I know that's a lot of points. I get it. Um, but you don't have to spend it on that tree lord ancients anymore. Well, I mean, that's a bonus. Nor on your Durthus. So no. you've got points to spare. Also, um, Lariel's not great. So um, you're really struggling for points at this stage. What are you going to spend it on? <laughs> No, but uh, you you get access to a teleport, right? That's outside of the the woods. Yeah. So you've got um, the glade banner, which is one in every five models in this unit can be a glade banner bearer. Whenever a unit this includes a glade banner bearer, you can pile in six inches. So that's actually really big as well. Um, although obviously you can pile in means you have to have declared a charge or something has to be within three inches for you yeah. to pile in because it's not one of the more janky ones where you can pile in six if a unit's within six. Sisters of slaughter. Sisters of slaughter. 
Uh, way pipes. One in every five mods unit can be way pipes at the start of your movement phase. The unit can include any way pipes. If it does so, remove that unit from the battlefield and set it up anywhere on the battlefield more than nine inches away from any units. And that's why I think it could be really good. Anywhere because you've got because you've got a threat. I think I don't know who was in the chat. It might have been OJ earlier was saying that I think this is just having read it through. This army now is going to be like a castle that you like teleport out of. Um, maybe that's just again that's me looking at it because that's my army style. So maybe that isn't exactly how. Yeah, it, it, it's your army style. So I don't get why you are like you should be happy. What? Because I am. I'm, I'm not unhappy that we got a new book. It's just like it's a bit like when we did the show about monsters. Like Games Workshop don't get monsters. Like sometimes, like I don't know if they necessarily even understand their own book in this situation. And also the the key element of this, as we've always talked about, the Wildwoods is what frustrated slash annoyed people the most, and they didn't attack that problem. They, if if anything, have made it worse. Um, because you now have to buy them and they're not as impactful. Like, I remember doing an interview with Laurie Huggett Wild, and if you guys are new to Silverneth or thinking about getting Silverneth, go back and listen to that on the podcast. Um, it's really interesting. I hadn't really thought the Silverneth players used the trees to bait them in, um, but Laurie was saying that his big tactic was to 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 put up loads of forest, then he'd have things charge in and be like, "I fucking got you now." It's and because we don't have a choice. Because <laughs> <laughs> we must do it. Uh, <laughs> Fuck! <laughs> oh, I'm having a great day. Right, but once per phase, you can re-roll one failed hit roll or fail wound roll for an attack made by this unit, or one failed save roll. None of that matters. The one that matters is one failed run or charge roll. So, uh, uh, in addition to things like cogs, potentially the command trait, or just being nine inches away with the re-roll is pretty solid. Um, so you could do that for clearing objectives. <coughs> uh, clearing little guys at the back and just beating them up um, and claiming them. So I think tree. I don't know. I I, I definitely feel like tree robes have got a place. Especially, curious. Yeah, especially as I've seen how much heart people like. Plus the models are brilliant. Yeah, and heart renders are a little bit more effective for what they do. You can almost guarantee heart renders are going to go and take that objective yeah. for a turn. Um, but I kind of think of them as heart renders, and I've seen them used so well by so many Daughters of Cain players um, that I think yeah, maybe tree revenants have got a thing. Maybe they can do a thing. Big block, maybe. Little tens, maybe, could be a thing. Yeah. You know, normally, uh, yeah, that's what I think. I think tens enough. Because yeah. of the reach and the base size, you just get a wanky unit that you want to get in there and have a big unit of 30. It's, it's quite hard to fit. Mm-hmm. Right, Spike Revs. Uh, I'm concerned about time now, so we'll crack on. Uh, spike Revs, you can take you can take the, the 20 for 200. If you remember. I can remember you know. this. <laughs> Uh, Spite Revenants. Yeah. Spite Revenants. You get twenty for two hundred pesos. Uh, two hundred for twenty for two hundred. Yeah. Yeah. So like, and they put three attacks each, three threes, no render, one damage. Um. Uh, but that you know, twenty of them, you'd be rocking Bodies. out sixty attacks. Subtract one for the bravery characters of enemy units while they're within three inches of any friendly units with this ability. In addition, reroll successful battle shot tests for enemy units while within three inches of this as well. So you can kind of make a, a bravery debuff army. Yeah. Here, but I don't hate the concept of sixty attacks, threes and threes, and we can get reroll ones to hit, and we can get reroll ones to wound. And there's also an artifact that's going to give us rerolls. No, there's not. There's not, there, but we can get reroll ones to hit and reroll ones to wound. On the spell, right? Um, yeah, there's a couple of ways yeah. to do it. Um, so you, they could knock out a bunch of attacks, and for 200 points, that's a lot of board space. Again, it's going to be a delivery system, realistically. Yeah, uh, I think it's going to be the thing. 200 points is cheap. Though. 200 points is cheap. Yeah. Big, big footprint as well. See you later, Laurie. Um, and, and I mean, you can also put them in. Uh, we haven't talked about the formations yet. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll get onto them. I was just blasting through because there's not many units, so we've got Tree Lord Ancient, um, twelve wounds, three up save. He's got one attack uh, at eighteen inch range that could do D six damage, but it's pretty negligible. The Impaling Talons, uh, which is a cool little rule, which potentially can nuke a model, uh, is one attack, and then you've got Sweeping Blows, which is three. And as soon as you've taken three wounds, it goes down to two. It's a terrible combat monster. Never use it to do anything. Stand on an objective. On average, it does three and a half damage in combat. So it casts one spell as well. However, it, you do have a uh, ground shaking stomp, which also the tree lord and Durthu has on a four plus. Uh, if a unit's within three inches at the start of the combat phase, you can make it so that uh, they strike at the end of the combat phase. Yeah, so they change that one from minus one to hit to always strike last or strike last. Yeah, always, yeah. So what do you think about that change? 
I mean, they so had like, to, they had to get it at somewhere, right? Uh, and it's a four up. Yeah. Do you want to risk your guy on a four up versus like a big Grizzlegor guy? Yeah, this book doesn't have strike first, so we haven't even attacked that problem yet. This it book... does have strike first, but they do in the same way as Slanish has it. Yes, but it's a four plus, and Slanish have it on a two plus. Yeah, it's way worse. It's way way but worse. But they have it. They do have it. Yes, it's way worse. Um, it's not good. They don't have strikes first. They just have stuff strike last. That's different. Because even in your turn, if you're charging a strike first thing, it's you charge them, and on a 50-50, they strike last. Right? So, like, you're charging at a huge risk. Where they're, like... And also, you're slow. And also, don't charge this model into anything. Because it sucks. Like, at combat. Like, you would charge... You would have to charge this in along with the Colonel Hunters you're using to do the combat with. They just kill the Colonel Hunters and stuff. Well, no, because because they still strike last. If you get it off, they'll still strike last. Yeah, right? yeah, you won't kill anything by itself, no. So, um, oh. Skillshot says, I'm disappointed that they couldn't address the wild world problem just to make it easier for newbies. I agree with that as well. Impale. <coughs> um, if the unmodified hit roll for a um, massive impale talent is a six, the attack inflicts D6 mortal wounds on the target and the attack sequence ends. So, it used to be slain, right? Yeah, it used to be slain. So, D6 mortal wounds. Yeah, I think it's better, probably, D6 mortal wounds. It is, but it's one attack, one occasion. Occasionally, we'll do a six and do d six, so yeah. it's okay. But but before it didn't work on stuff that had more than five wounds. Mm, you gotta be a bit closer, mate. Like, sure, like this, quiet. like yeah, this. You're just quite quiet. I'm quite loud. I'll try and balance it out. Um, I'll be like this, man. <laughs> so the true Lord Ancient once for battle in your hero phase, you can pick one friendly model with this ability and set up an awakened wildwood wholly within eighteen inches of that model, so you can get woods out that way. You didn't have to roll it. You don't have to roll it. That's, once per that, battle that's in your hero better phase. than before. It's better than before. Wholly within 18 inches. Not, Still not the four up. No, not bad, but... That's better than before. Look at me. This is better than before. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just... I'm, I don't have an opinion on it, so I'll let it slide. Um, magic, uh, Awakening in the Wood. Awakening in the Wood is cast value six. Six for the cast pick, one friendly Awaken Wood. Wholly within 30 inches. Great range. Yeah. Each enemy unit within three inches of that Awaken Wild Wood suffers D3 mortal wounds. See, that's a great spell. Right, it's cast on a six, so it's easier to cast than you'd expect. It's massive range, so you can backboard your model, get yourself out of unbind range, and just like start going to town. I love it, and it, obviously it doesn't affect Sylvan uh, enemy unit, yeah, so it won't affect your own army. What I don't like, what it just encourages, it means that I've got to get loads of Sylvan Wildwoods. The thing, the thing that everyone doesn't like about playing Sylvan is all the fucking woods they got to go through. Maybe the new ones are much easier, but maybe they're not. Like, no one's actually played with them yet to go, oh, yeah. Like, is it significantly Take easier? Take a moment. <laughs> Don't pray. <laughs> Silence. Okay. All right, good. That's all we can do. That's all we can do. Command abilities. You can use the command ability in your hero phase. If you do so, pick one friendly. But, you know, Awakening in the Woods is a great spell, but it really encourages you to put the Wild Woods near the objective, make your opponent have to run near them, and then be like, come on, motherfucker. Yeah. You're going to take... <laughs> and then you have the other stuff as well. Then you're going to take the whole D3 mortal wounds. Careful. Fucking, you're dead. Basically, a vortex. <laughs> it's, it's basically. Vortex, vortex confirmed. Yeah. Uh, please, uh, if you just joined us, I think now we can confirm that this is. Um, Silver Death Battle Tome is basically more broke than the Skaven one, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's a fact. Uh, so that's the review. You can use this command ability in your hero phase. If you do so, pick one friendly model. This command ability until you hit next hero phase. You can reroll save rolls of one for attacks that target silver. I think it's wholly within twelve inches of that model. I really like this. Yeah, it's wholly within twelve. So you've got some Colonel Thunters to dish out a bit as well. So it's incredibly limited as a range. But what's really nice about it is because you can cast almost no fucking spells because you're not taking Alariel. It saves you having to cast Mystic Shield. Twelve isn't that short. Take it from a loon shrine guy. <laughs> okay, all you right. Have to so use all those little sticks and things you get. Yeah, little so, sticks. Yeah. So you think that's all right? Yeah. Wholly within twelve. Yeah. All right. Cool. All right. Okay. I think that's not too bad, especially for my castle. That I'm Otherwise, I mean, if you, if you're doing it bigger, then why even bother? I mean, the issue is, is you see, you might have a tree lord ancient specifically only because of the awakening in the wood spell. Yes, and the extra wood spell. Extra wood ability. The extra wood ability. Yeah, those would be the two reasons to take it, not anything else. 
But the commander is nice. There's an extra thing. Yeah. So then you've got the spirit of derp thing. We're winning him over, boys. <laughs> Look let's, at me. Also, let's skip this one. <laughs> What's up, John? I thought you said Dirty was really good. He's cool. He's cool. He is cool. One of my favourite fucking things. The spirit of like an, a, a dead tree god. Yeah? Full of rage, ready to murder stuff. <sighs> <laughs> oh boy, oh boy. Right, oh boy, oh boy. So he's got the Verdant Blast, 15 inch shooting attack, um, which starts with six attacks, hits on fours, wounds on threes, minus one, does D3 damage. It's not bad. It's not bad at all. Not bad at all. He's got his guardian sword. The thing he's most famous for. He's also got his impaling talents and can do D6. He's also got the stomp. So he's going to be able to... Um, strike last. Strike last. Um, uh, on a four plus, obviously. Uh, and then he's also That's got... Weird. That's really weird, actually. What? Why on a four up and give it to others on a two up? Um, these guys are more expensive? These guys are more expensive. Uh, no, no, no. The keeper, a keeper is 400. 400. Oh, okay. Yeah. That, that's what they pay for, well, the two up. Yeah, that's what they pay for, the yeah. two up, or reliability. Yeah. Maybe. Um, but, so he's got three up save, so it's pretty good. He moves five. He's so much so faster does, than every dispossessed guy. How does guy a the... dryad that's littler with littler legs, still a tree, even if it's a small tree? So have you seen how a branch can like blow away in the wind? <laughs> <laughs> they need like a storm to make a tree, so they have that help from the wind. Okay. So when the wind faction comes out, they might get a speed increase. Well, yeah, but then they will might break as well. That's right. But ben, 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 bent never broken. But mainly it's a tree, right? So it shouldn't be fussed. <laughs> <sighs> uh, anyway, so uh, um, so he adds plus one to the bravery coaches for any silver anything that's holier than twelve of him as well. Not really a big deal. However, uh, in close combat. He's got uh, three attacks that hit on threes, wound on threes, rend two, and they do the flat six damage, which he is famous for at this stage. However, and this is very important, as soon as he's taken three wounds, it goes down to D6. Luckily, we know that we can heal him a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily. Thankfully, he's going to be like, just so if we run around on like seven wounds. So, do you know what I tend to do? I don't know if you play this, like this, John. What I'll do is like, I'll pick a unit of like 20 something, like 20 dryads, right? I'll pick that and I'll go, like, right, I'll kill a few from shooting. I'll be like, oh, I've killed eight of them now. I'm going to stop. Yeah. And then I go, right, Durthu. And I do a couple of like spells and more wounds to him. And I'm like, and I do a couple of bits of shooting. I'm like, fucking, he's got seven wounds left. I'm just going to leave him alone now. And then I take my next bit of my unit and then I attack another little unit. I go, yeah. I'm really going to get them in three turns. I start, let's keep doing this for three turns. That's how, you, that's how you do things. That's my system anyway. What about you? So I, I would summon a wild wood, then I would just teleport him. Yeah? It's easier. Would you teleport him back to the shop? <laughs> <laughs> With asking for my money back. <laughs> You can't do that in the Get Started box. You, think you... you can't just pick out the tree guy and say, I want the money back for this one. <laughs> it's not how it works. Oh, Omega Havoc, thanks for subscribing 10 months in a row. You're a badass. Anyway, um, uh, he, so he has got the Spirit Pass. So this is cool. Both Tree Lord and Ancient, uh, I didn't talk about that. Tree Lord and him uh, have got the ability to, in the movement phase, this model wholly within six inches of uh, Awake Wild Wildwood, it can walk the Spirit Path instead of making a normal move. Uh, it does not move, so then this model at the battlefield is set up wholly within six inches of a differently friendly Awake Wild Wood. So, it could move and you could still move another unit. You're right. What? You were like... Yeah, I was just going to sneeze. <laughs> <laughs> and then Wrathful Guardian, uh, add two to the attacks characteristic of this model's Guardian so Sword. Was it nine away from uh, enemies? Yeah, en yeah, nine away from enemies, yeah. yeah. Uh, add two to the attacks characteristic of this model's Guardian Sword, while this model is wholly within eight inches of the Awake Wild Wood. So, um, if they've got within eight inches of the Wildwood, sweet, charge over. You'll have five attacks, hit on threes, win on threes, rend two, doing six damage. So, could do 30 damage. Um, but you're going to miss one, and you're not going to wound one. So, now he's doing 18 damage. Um, and they might save one, because it's minus two, so you're just doing 12 damage. Um, so, but then you can, there are pluses, obviously you can take gear strike, so he's hit on twos, win on twos. You can get reroll ones to hit, you can get reroll ones to wound. Uh, there are, you can take him in one of the, uh, glades that we haven't talked about yet, where you're going to get pluses to hit and pluses to wound. Yeah, extra um, attacks. And, and you get extra attacks as well, uh, and extra attack generated from sixes. So he could do loads of damage, uh, and 
so there is also a plus two attacks artifact. So yeah, you, know, you can have him up to some crazy attacks. A one man mortal wound taking machine. <laughs> if you don't roll a four up, he's dead. No, that's not true. No, what are you saying, John? Like, look, Keeper of Secrets goes into Spirit of Dirthu, right? And he's, uh, and then the Keeper of Secrets goes first. It's not guaranteed the Spirit of Dirthu will be dead, right? A fleshy corpse dragon goes into him. It's not guaranteed he's going to be dead, is it? Yeah, it is. Is it? At least the fleshy of the corpse dragon. Yeah, and also the Keeper of Secrets. What about Bloodthirster? He's dead. <laughs> yeah. Wait, but he's slower than the Bloodthirster, Blood so Blood you can also trick now. him. You can trick him. The Bloodthirster is also only on the four up. So that's good, good, good odds going into Bloodthirst, actually. I love you, Dirthy. I wish you were good. I personally don't think it's about the Dirths. But, so there we go. And then you've got Colonel Thunters, uh, which is the same profile as you've seen before. Uh, they're great Colonel Thunters. Uh, in my, you know, they've got a Tree Lord. I refuse to talk about Tree Lord. End of conversation. Didn't they change it anything? Uh, he's got four attacks. The same. He's exactly the same. It's a hero? Uh, he's not. Oh, fucking hell. Let me find it. All right, I'll talk about it if you want to, but it's going to make me mad. It's going to make me mad. In fact, I don't even have seen it. I think w with my memory that I remembered um, is... Do you know what's really nice about my memory? Is I've not had to use my memory to look at the uh, Path to Glory stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you could just block that out. Select just, blocked, memory. just blocked it right out, uh, which is cool. I can't find it, mate. Okay. Can you find it? No. Okay, well, is your phone dead? No, but I have looked. Oh, oh okay. Well, we don't know. Uh, yeah, none of us wanted to talk about Tree Lords, so we're not going to. Uh, I know that sounds like an incomplete review, but that's just the facts. Right, Colonel Thunders with scythes. Um, they hit on threes. The three attacks, threes, threes, ren two, d3 damage. Awesome. Uh, they can still do Tangle Thorn uh, thicket, uh, thicket, so they can reroll saves if they get charged or just in the combat phase anyway, so yeah. that's good. So if they're not being charged, so again, really good if they sit inside those wads near the <coughs> objectives. Um, the Tree Lord is not a hero. Thank you. Uh, he wasn't before either. No. Uh, you've also got, at the end of the combat phase, you can roll a dice for each one of the unit of four plus, you can do a mortal wound. So they've got all the same rules uh, with the scythe guys. Um, the bow guys, I think, have got all the same rules as well. I think so. I need to double check. The big thing that's, that's changed yep. is the synergies, I'd say. What do you mean? Like there's a hero we haven't talked about. Do you want to get it up then? Arch Revenant. Yes, there's the Arch Revenant. We haven't talked about him yet. Which I feel we need to talk what about. Today? Uh, Arch Warlock. Oh. <laughs> oh. Thanks for listening, by the way, everyone. I'm glad you've uh, joined us for this uh, impromptu day. Um, but uh, it's nice having you here. So, we had an Arc Revenant as well. Let's head back to the hero department. Yep. Five wounds. Four up save. Movement 12. Nice. Uh, bravery 8. Uh, two attacks with his glaive. Three attacks with his glaive. Two, two inch reach. Uh, threes and threes. Ren 2, damage 2. And then he has the Zephyr Spites Tail Pincers. So, that's the bat thing. The moth, moth thing on his yep. back. Four up, three up. No Ren damage, D3. Uh, da, 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 and it also counts as a mount, so you can't give any buffs to it <laughs> if you yep. wanted to. Uh, Crescent Shield at the start of the combat phase. Say whether this model is using the shield for protection or just steady the weapon. If they use the shield for protection, you can reroll save rolls of 1 for attacks to target this model in that phase. If they use the shield to steady their weapon, you can reroll hit rolls of 1 for attacks with made with this model's Revenant Glaive in that phase. And... Uh, it is the sha it it's a it's a he is a she, whatever. Uh, champion of Kernot. Reroll hit rolls of one for friendly Kernot hunters units while they are wholly within twelve of this model, which is really nice. It is nice, in my opinion. And you have the ultimate sacrifice. Once per battle, when you allocate a wound or mortal wound to this model, you can choose to negate it. If you do so, this model cannot fly or use Zephyr Spite's Tail Pincers attack for the rest of the battle. So the moth is dead. And the command ability. Uh, Cold battle. If you use this command ability at the start of the combat phase, you can do so. Uh, if you do so, pick one friendly silver unit unit whole within 9 of a friendly model with this command ability or whole within 12 of a friendly model with this command ability that is the general. Add one to the attack characteristic. Uh, 
of that unit's melee weapons in the combat phase. Mm -hmm. It's good, right? Yeah, it's great. And you can't stack it as well. Good yeah. Games Workshop. Yeah. Film. You can't stack it either. There's, yeah, so plus, plus one attack. I mean, yeah. great on great on revs. Great, great on sprites. Great on uh, dryads because you can take them in huge blocks. So plus one attack on dryad, 30 extra attacks. Hunters, right? Well, I would say it's, yeah, it's probably better on hunters with scythes um, yeah. than it is hunters with swords. Uh, just because they, they kick out a bit more damage, uh, and I prefer them. Oh, Grant well, Fraser, isn't, thanks isn't, for joining Patreon. Isn't there like, uh, I think there's like, uh, I don't know if that discussion is done, but I think the conclusion was, if you take hunters in threes, yep. swords are the bee's knees. And if you take them in six, you take skites because you get the extra reach. So well, we're, so we're going to talk about... And that. you get the can opener effect of the run too. I personally prefer sides always, but we'll talk about it. So great swords, uh, move five, five wounds each with a four up save. Uh, they've always been five wounds. Why they used to be four wounds? No, I'm sure they used to. Did they used to be four wounds? Everybody at home. Well, we can check the app. <laughs> Is it not updated yet? The book's out. Why would it be? Well, uh, no always much. five. Thank you. As someone who owns 29 of them, I would expect to know, but not 29. What, 27 not today. <laughs> um, so you can have if you have swords, uh, you can have one more. This unit can be a hunt master. Add one to the hit rolls for attacks made with that. And you've got the envoys, the ever queen. So you basically can use command abilities from them as if they were the character That's using nice. it. Yeah, it's always good. Um, uh, as being in with, they always count as being within range of that command ability, which is just awesome. And then you've got thunder strikes. If there's an uh, unmodified wound roll for six made with the Colonel Thunder Great Sword, that attack ends, and you do one mortal wound to the, in addition. Um, it doesn't end, sorry. It just You do one mortal wound in addition to any normal damage, which is great, because a unit three is going to be doing 12 attacks. That's two mortal wounds in addition as well. They they hit on threes, they win threes, rend one, and they do two damage. So they're great. They are good, the swords, and they got a lot better with the mortal wound yeah, thing. Yeah. And then you've got Tanglethorn Thicket, so that if they uh, get attacked, well, in the combat phase, you can reroll saves, and then also trample underfoot that they can... Uh, do a bit of more wound output at the end. So you might end up doing like quite a few more wounds out of these guys. Um, uh, Tyler says, I think a unit of six Colonel Hunters will be more common going forward. Um, Tyler also says lots of armies with large units so they can often get in range. Um, there we go. Yeah, I agree. Swords. Everyone's all about swords, especially uh, OJ who wants Winterleaf. We'll talk about the battalions. We're going to go into them in just a minute. Sorry, the glades. Glade. Yeah, glades. Um, Skyports. Pardon me? Skyports. Skyports, yeah. And then you've got Hunters with Great Bows. So I think you're going to see a lot of these, personally. Um, uh, so again, five wounds, four up save. That's re-rollable if they get into combat. Plus one to hit for the Huntmaster. I would almost argue for going MSU for these guys. So you get one of the three also always gets plus one to hit. Um, the issue is is things that do AoE damage, looking at you, Skaven Vortex, and other things that do AoE yeah. damage, right? Because, again, and then the spell, if it's got pretty good mobility, a predatory one could hit quite a few of these because the way I would see the bow hunters being used is near a character. Yeah. Um, but most of the buffs are command abilities and they get the command abilities anyways, right? So. Yes. Yeah, but the one that I'm thinking of isn't. I, I don't think it is. I'll double check. Um, anyway, uh, if so yeah, you've got all the normal things in there, but their bow is 30 inch range, which is just amazing. Two attacks, fours to hit, threes to wound, rend one and D3 damage. And you could have one of those, one of those six, two of those six shots hitting on threes. Um, they've always been a little bit unreliable, so people have put things like um, hurricanes inside for plus one to hit. You know, uh, people have tried to make it so that there's ways to do. So that's all the units. Let's, should we talk about the battalions? Yeah. Right. Uh, sorry, not the battalions. Uh, or should we do the battalions first? Let's do let's, battalions. Let's first. do the battalions first. Let's see. Before we get onto the flavor at the end of it. Free spirits. Free spirits. Yes, bro. Uh, so organization: uh, one spirit of Durthu, three units of Colonel Hunters. Abilities, Swift Vengeance. Vengeance. In your movement phase, if you declare a unit from this battalion will run, do not make a round roll. Instead, add six to the move characteristic of that unit for that phase. So, a little bit of clarification here. So that's one Spirit of Durthu and three units of Colonel Hunters. Yeah, a bit of clarification. It says, in your movement phase, if you declare a, for a unit from this battalion will run. Yeah? Um, so a run roll is just where you you say I'm going to run and yeah. then you add a dice onto your movement characteristic when you run. However, the wording could be clearer here. Uh, so I've seen two people, so two interpretations of this. One is that what you're doing is auto running six inches and other people are saying that you are adding six inches onto your move and you're not actually running at all. 
The issue is, is you've declared that you are running, and then there's nothing in the preceding words after I see um, that say that you aren't. However, uh, an FAQ would be sweet on yeah. that. Please give it. So, so if if you run, you you add you roll a dice and then you add that dice to your movement characteristic. Correct. Uh, so, I, I guess they should have just done uh, that. Roll counts as a six. Yeah, that's just it. Should just be worded better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As far as I read it, and it's, and it's probably the safest way to play it is a run counts as six. Um, as a it, it's a run. It's a run, yeah. which means you can't charge, um, and what other other things there. Um, but the, uh, digital Keegan, correct. The wording is nuts. Maybe they just got a new fellow on this battle tone. That's fine. Yeah, and he's copy and pasted from the old one. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but then you got Lords of the Clan. Uh, two to four tree lord ancients, one to three tree lords. I don't hate this. Um, in your shooting phase, roll a dice for each enemy unit within six inches of two or more models from this. On a two plus, the enemy suffers D3 mortal wounds. And like, and that's each enemy unit. So if you had two tree lord ancients near a forest, yeah, on an objective, right? They, then they charge in. They're like, ah, they hit your dryad wall and they just stand there for a bit. Then you awaken the wood, D3 mortal wounds to everyone within three inches. You shoot in phase. Each one of them is taking D three mortal wounds. You you move the spooky tree past them. Three D three mortal. You know you just like oh no D six mortal wounds from the spooky, spooky wood. You really could like fuck people up. But it does require the your opponent to be like I'm going to go where you want me to go. And things like eels, for example, like you can always put candy on the board. <laughs> Oh. Leading up to a van with a sp- <laughs> <laughs> that says free oh. sweets inside. Another one. Uh, yeah. um, however, realistically, I like it though. I think it's cool. It is cool, and there might be like there might be a way to stack it. Again, it's whether or not like opponents are just going to run at, run at those woods. Um, but you know, two tree lords, you'll you'll stick. If you had two tree lords, I mean, already, if it's a circle, you can always place it around the objective, right? Yeah, but you do have to take a tree lord with that. Yeah, I don't so think there's a two hundred point tax. I think you're fine. Three lords would be fine, man. Yeah, they are not to. fine. They're, in any, they're not fine at all. John, they got right. They got four attacks, right? You don't take them for attacking. You take them for supporting. You take them for standing on objectives. Have you ever had a three lord like, yeah, I'm gonna punch the shit out of you with this? Then what are you spending two hundred points on? Two hundred. It's not two hundred. Two hundred for a tree lord. Oh, a tr- oh, was it a tree lord? Yeah, you need to take a tree oh, lord. Sorry, bro. <laughs> I thought it was ancient. Are you retracting the tree lord support? I certainly am. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so then you've got the household battalion, which is one tree lord, a branch witch, and a unit of tree revs. Enemy units within three inches of any unit's battalion cannot treat. Retreat. So there's a thing there. Again, you've got to take a tree lord, a 200 point tax. I don't, I'm not rating it. The one that I think people are going to take a lot, and I think is the one, um, is forest folk. Right, uh, Digital Keegan says that orc players will run into those woods, and I have to agree, which is why I said, "Don't worry, Silver players, the Iron Jaws are still out there playing games." <coughs> uh, Prometheus points out that tree lords are way better than dank hold truck bosses, and way cheaper. There isn't really a comeback to that. Everything is. <laughs> nah. Um, anyway, forest folk. I, I think this is especially when you want to reduce drops. I personally think I'm going to see this a lot, and this is uh, one branch wraith and three to unit, three to three units of dryad. So that's your battle line done and a hero done. Gets you an artifact and a command point, and also reduces your drops. Um, units from this battalion can retreat and still charge later in the same turn. Also amazing for objective games. Yeah, right. So like holding up lines, running away. There's just loads of skill there. I like it. Yeah. I think that's retreat and charge is probably one of the strongest abilities in the game. Yeah, me. absolutely. Especially in objective based, like yeah. big six inches. I think And as you said, this is like this isn't even attacks, because you probably want everything in this battalion anyways. You you want everything in that battalion. Yeah. So I, I for me that's the go to I think I think everything will have a forest folk. Starts with a forest folk, even if it's minimum. Um, because it gets you a command point and an artifact. And the yeah. artifacts are like you're gonna want them. Yeah, right. for sure, for but sure. But then probably not, because you might not be taking any of the big things to stick them on. Take the support ones. And they, exactly, support characters, I think. Yeah. yeah. Um, so then you've got Outcasts. You've got three units of Spite Revenants. Uh, so this is the Outcast Battalion. If an enemy unit fails a battle shock test within three inches of any units from this battalion, add D3 to the number of units that can flee. If you combine that, obviously, with their own War Scroll ability, that's two D3 units run away. 
Is it their own war skill ability? No, no. If you combine, no. Sorry, if you like, so they use this. Both abilities happen at the same time. Is what I'm saying. Yeah. So there is a way to get an additional D3, a model fleeing. So yeah. two D3. Yeah. So massive love <coughs> for the Forest Folk Battalion yeah. and the Outcast Battalion is kind of janky, weird, cool. Yeah. It? And it's it's a hundred points. It's really cheap as Forest Battalion goes. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the Forest Folk is one hundred forty. So it's also relatively cheap. Yes. Uh, well, I'm, so I'm going to read the so the um, battalions now. Uh, so Forest Folk is 140 points. So it's quite expensive, but it reduces your drops. And I think Sylvaneth players are going to be obsessed with reducing their drops. So uh, I would say that that's wicked. Um, the Free Spirits is 140. Household is 100. The Lords of the Clan is 60, which is quite nice and cheap, to be honest. The Lords of the Clan. Have you seen that there is... Um... An, outcoast, an Outcast is 100. Um, and then the Wargrove is 80. I don't know if this is new, yep. but have you seen there is... Um max amount of formations you're allowed to take which means you could potentially take two outcast formations where does it say that so in my memory i have a min and a max one one and it doesn't say that on the outcast i'm not sure what that means but where where where, on the actual battalion no in the memory right here you have uh numbers min max yeah but on your memory (laughs) yeah yeah let me go look so I wonder if that means. But no, that, none of that's on the actual Warscore Battalion. It's on the endless spells. It's on the fucking endless spells. Yeah, <laughs> I can't. I can't read my memory. <laughs> Your memory is weak. Mystery solved. No, no issues. Um, so if you guys are out there and still listening, thank you so much. Get yourself a cup of tea. Uh, we're we're nearly there. So uh, that's the. I think that's all of the battalions. Just double check. Yeah, Household, so. outcast, forest folk, lords of the clan. Yeah. Um, so then. The one that's we need to, so now we get to talk about the sky ports, yeah. Um, so you're kind of like your glades. So yeah. these are your free rules, and it will change the flavor. So a little bit of a teaser: if you already have painted all of your army with snow bases, you are going to be very happy. If you didn't, get some snow base coming. I think. I think that's the kind of maybe, maybe. maybe. So let's talk about the first one: Oakenbrow. The ability you get if you take Oakenbrow is you subtract two from the number of wounds suffered by Oakenbrow Spirits of Durthu, Oakenbrow Tree Lord Ancients, or Tree Lords when determining which row, uh, which row on their damage table to use on a minimum of zero. Almost useless. So they become they could become worse. It takes longer death for them to get worse, right? Basically. Yeah. Yeah, which is kind of nice on Durthu. Yeah. Especially with that, all that healing you're going to do to keep him alive, right? Yep, 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 yep. Then you've got the command ability. Um, so you can use the command ability at the start of the battle shot phase. If you do so, pick one friendly Okamara hero. Until the end of that phase, do not take the battle shot test for a friendly Okamara triads units while within, wholly within 16 of them. So That's you, not bad. That's not bad. Because there's only one wood that you're immune to battle shock in, like from the get go. Mm-hmm. That's the one that you pick. Mm hmm. So we'll see, like, if you have a... I don't think there is a command point form in this book, but... Nope. Uh, so then command tray, add one to the wounds characteristic of the general. It's fine. And then, because you have to take... A local command general must have this command trait, so that's one of the things about taking one of these unfortunate things, uh, is that your command trait is picked for you. Uh, so everything has to be worth it, right? So then you've got the artifact of power. Uh, roll a dice each time you allocate a wound or mortal wound on the barrel. On a six plus, that wound or mortal wound is negated. There you go, John. We can survive all the mortal wounds on the, with the dawn class. of the mortal wounds we don't give a fuck about. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. One out of six. What's that artifact you can take where you just don't have four? Ignite skills. <laughs> <laughs> but that was wound or a mortal wound. Yeah. I think Ignax is only against mortal wounds. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, it's fine. Um... Personally, for me, I don't think Oakenbrow adds anything to the army, so I'd avoid it. Gnarl Root. Um, reroll hit rolls of one for attacks made by friendly Gnarl Root units while they're wholly within 12 inches of Gnarl Root wizards. It's cool. You don't yeah. have to bother doing it. Um, command ability. You can use this command ability at the start of the combat phase. If you do so, pick one friendly Gnarl Root unit wholly within 12 inches of a friendly Gnarl Root hero to the end of the phase. Roll dice each time you allocate a wound or mortal wound, and on a six up, you ignore it. It's got a six up death save. Which is quite nice. Yeah. That's not bad. Especially like... 20% bigger army right there. Yeah. No, that's not... That's One in six is 20%, right? No, 18%. Whatever. Maybe. 16%. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, then command trait um, is you get nate nurtured by magic. Once in each of your hero phases, if this general successfully casts a spell that is not unbound, pick one friendly null root unit holding the nature into this general. You can heal D3 wounds allocated to that unit. It's 16.6. We're both wrong. <laughs> Good. Um, so you can heal D3 if you successfully cast a spell uh, from a model on your one cast wizard. So that command trait is rubbish. Next up, artifact of power. No, is... If you take if you take uh, L'Oreal, three costs, three D3. No, because it's a command trait, so it would go on. Can't go on L'Oreal. <sighs> You're right. Um, yeah, it's just a one D3. It's a trait. It's. However, exciting news, the artifact of power is cool. It's called the Chalice of Nectar, and when making a casting or unbinding roll for the bearer, roll 3d6, remove one of your from your choice, and then use the remaining 2d6 to determine the casting or unbinding roll. That's good, actually. So, you know... That's really, that's a scaling one without dying. That's good, actually. That's cool. So, you, so you've got one very, very good caster, which is good, because that yeah. one very good caster is only casting one spell. But I would probably put the Chalice of Nectar personally on the unit that's summoning the Ten Dryads. Yeah. And, just, and just, also just, you get the flexibility if you want to do an spell with that one. You probably have two of those. You, you can't have two Chalice of Nectars. No, no, no. But two other guys that someone... Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> uh, so what do you think of Gnarl Root, John? And Twitch chat, what do you think of Gnarl Root? I think the the the, the old Narloot was probably stronger. Agreed. Uh, it had some segregated spells, and uh, the thing that you can't retreat from them was, was, I think, part of that, right? Okay. Do you want to go for my favorite? But my favorite of the glades, yeah, is the Heartwood. I, I think so you've I got courage for Kernoth. Add one to the bravery characteristic of friendly Heartwood units while they're holier than twelve inches of only friendly Heartwood heroes. Don't care about that. Uh, what one or two? Uh, what? How much did you add? Plus one. It's not bad. It's not bad. Like Commandability, the Lord of the Hunt. You can use this commandability at the start of the combat phase. If you do, pick one enemy unit within 12 inches of a friendly Heartwood hero. Until the end of that phase, you can reroll hit and wound rolls for one for attacks that made by friendly Heartwood units that target the enemy. So now you have, if you take the Arch Revenant, you have an extra attack. Uh -huh. And with that one, you have reroll once and hit the wound. Yep. Yeah, so extra attack, reroll ones to hit wounds. So it really, <coughs> really, really does encourage you to take kind of a big block of something. Like I quite like the idea of dryads, like big block of them plus one attack, so that they got three attacks each. Just create thirty attacks and do it in your phase. They'll be hitting on threes, rerolling ones, uh, wounded on fours, rerolling ones. No rend, but one damage. And then obviously, what's really exciting is because they always strikes first, they'll just be beating everyone up. <laughs> <laughs> Liar, liar, pants on fire. <laughs> but no, I do. I do genuinely like it on Dryads. Um, I, I also like it on um, uh, that big unit of revs that we talked about before. Yeah. That's the thing. Um, so then you command trait, uh, which goes on your general. If the general is slain, you can pick one enemy unit within one inch of this general before they are removed from play. Roll a dice on a two to five, it suffers D3 more wounds. On a six, it suffers D6 more wounds. It's not bad. It's not It's not good. It's not. It's, it's good. Could be something. It's a thing. It's a thing. Uh, but then the reason to take it would be the artifact of power. The horn of the consort. So re you can reroll hit rolls and attacks. Sorry, reroll hit rolls for attacks made by friendly Heartwood Kernoth Hunters wholly within 12 inches of the bearer. And I've checked this like, I've read it like five times to make sure I haven't fucked it up. But that's not in the combat phase. And almost everything in this book seems to be orientated around the combat phase. Um, and it's reroll hit rolls and uh, reroll hit rolls for attacks made by these friendly Heartwood Kernoth Hunters. And you can obviously also um, find you can get reroll ones to wound as well. Yeah. So basically, you take as many bow hunters as you want in a list who hit on fours normally. But then now you can just have this artifact to power, which you have to take if you take this. It's not it, a bad artifact, to be fair. It's not a bad artifact, to be fair, and they're re-rolling all the hits. I mean, you could put it on the Arch Revenant as well, run him up the board, yeah, and then you can have it so that your, like, scythes or your bow hunters or even um, your uh, dryads are just, like, hit, they can have them hitting on threes, re-rolling all their hits. But probably on bow hunters, like, it's pretty reliable at that stage and they'll do loads of work. So, personally, I think that's that's one of the strongest picks in the book. 
uh, with the command ability also being really good. So yeah. no, that's a good one. Yeah, ho- um, John. I'm not even going to bother with this, John. The Iron Bark. Ah, move well, on. Well, <laughs> you can think dwarves. <laughs> so the Iron Bark rubbish. So we won't read it out. Winterleaf. Um, I kind of like this one. I like this one. If the unmodified hit roll for an attack made with... So the abilities, um, this one's great. And probably the one I think you'll see a lot of. If the unmodified hit roll for an attack made with this melee weapon by a friendly winter leaf unit is a six, that attack inflicts two hits on the target instead of one. Make a wound and save roll for each hit. So, like, being able to have plus one attack on a big unit of dryads from the Revenant uh, is pretty solid. So then they could be doing 60 attacks uh, from those guys, hitting uh, any sixes that they hit with, uh, are going to generate more, or on do something that's more woundy. So something like, you know, scythe hunters or bow hunters um, could do the thing. Uh, sorry, scythe hunters or sword hunters. I'm going to have to use saying that, um, and they can just do loads of damage. Yeah, I mean, you could also have it happen on Dirthu because he'll be in. He'll be in the glade. Yep. But are we taking him? Have we decided? Dirthu. Yeah. Ah, he's he's not coming. He's not. He's not coming. He's not invited to the party. It's too expensive, I think. So then you've got the command ability. You can use this command ability in your shooting phase. If you do so, pick one enemy within 12 inches of a friendly Winterleaf hero invisible to them. Roll a number of dice equal to the number of models in that unit. For each six, that unit suffers one mortal wound. So that is also awesome. That's a command ability that is like a little bit of a horde eater. Yeah, it's like uh, Dwellers, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's, it's like a spell you have to cast, but it's a command ability. Yeah. So great. Then you've got the command trait. Roll a dice for each time a wound is inflicted by a melee weapon is allocated to this general and not negated on a 5+. plus. The attacking unit suffers one mortal wound. Best crystal gore counter in the game. Uh, roll dice each time a wound is inflicted by a melee weapon is allocated to general and not negated. Yes. So I, I actually have this, interestingly, guys, on um, my Drazeroth the Asher, my Chaos Dwarf character. Uh, but, uh, but like Jonathan says, basically, if you have if you, if you had a big wound model and the crystal general comes in and does like... 100 damage that you don't save you can roll 100 dice and then every 5 plus or would you ever only get to roll the 12 let's uh, say I have 12 wounds no no because you don't roll dice each time right so like it works in pots so um, you do 100 damage for example yeah. yeah I roll all my saves and it goes down to 80 damage I take 80 damage which has been unsaved I don't stop at 12 but it could be worth being worded unless um, unless anyone's got an I FAQ think it example. needs to be FAQ actually do you think? Yeah. Because you can't take 8 of damage if you only have 12 wounds. You can. You took that ma- amount of damage. It doesn't stop. It's just done. So you're going down to... You're telling me there's a minus on wound No, cases. I'm not saying there's a minus. It's just that's how much damage you took. And wasn't. Um, maybe you're right. It could be doing with FAQ if there isn't one already. I mean, we're having the discussion, right? Yeah, yeah. It's, good. <laughs> it's, a, it's a good point. Yeah, so that could be really, really... Um, oh, just, Sergio says it doesn't need to be FAQ'd. Apparently, it's already out. Well, but we'll see. Um, or or he's really like fuck off. <laughs> what are the two? I will... <laughs> but what that could do basically is if something did an offensive amount of damage, you might be able to do an offensive amount of mortal wounds. Some wrathmonger. Yeah. So yeah. that would be really cool. Yeah. Um. So we'll see. Uh. Nah. You take that damage. You don't remove the model immediately. Yeah. You because because it works in pots as well. A lot of times, like you know, when you've got like a multi wound prof. Oh, sorry. A, a, a model with lots of weapon profiles on it you yeah. know like um, a zombie lord on vampire dragon oh, the other way around that guy yeah um what you actually are meant to do is you take you you resolve all of the attacks and all of the saves yes and then you put it like then that's how much damage you take it's the same with the unit you like you roll it all like normally we stop when something's dead but you take all of the damage like so for instance if you had uh, you know if you had something that like on a six plus disagree well it happens simultaneously it, so you it, can't. it happens. I mean, I'll take all the damage, but when I'm taking twelve, I can't take anyone. That's true. That's true. But and, you, and the your wording, opponent, your opponent the wording on this one is: each time a wound is inflicted by a melee weapon, right? So you can't inflict any wounds to me if I don't have any wounds. No, because you also ignore wounds. You don't ignore damage. So they use wounds instead of damage, which is really interesting. Same with the Chaos Dwarf Allegiance ability. So I ignore. So I ignore the first wound I take. So some people are like, are like, oh, does that mean like the first wound roll, like before you roll D six? Like no, the way it works is you actually do you do a wound roll, which is converted to damage. Damage is then converted to wounds, and then you save. So for instance, when you take D six damage. 
and you roll five, that's actually becomes five wounds, which if you had a vermin lord, for instance, you'd roll five. So all dark. this you're saying now is your theory on it. Because no, it it's doesn't, a fact. But it doesn't say that anywhere in the books. No, because that's how it works through in the process. If you actually just read the books, that's how it goes. Disagree. <laughs> I don't know how you disagree with it. No, like, no. That's how everyone plays it. Like you'd have to show me an example where someone does, like, says the word wound, and like you do, like before I roll my save, I roll my five plus vermin or save before I roll my armor save. It's armor, then it's damage, then that becomes wounds, which you then do wound saves on. Discussion resilience is for every wound that you don't take. But this one is wounds that isn't negated. That's the difference, right? Yeah, same. But like that would move on to the next step. Like so, for instance, if you have a five plus, there are no steps in the rule book. There are, there are so many steps. As an example, you got an armor save, then you got a five plus vermin lord save, yeah, right? Yeah. But then you have the other six plus vermin lord save. Yeah. Then you have a mystical save. Yep. Yeah. Step, step, step. So, for instance, any wound that you take in the first step in that instance moves on to the second, which is another step where you roll a six up, and then it's another step where you roll another six up. In each case, a wound has been negated or not negated, and then you're having. A save against so it. as soon as the wound characteristic of a model reaches zero, it's removed. Well, you still roll all your dice through. Does that work? You can do it, but as soon as it reaches zero, it's taken 12 wounds, it's gone. Agreed, agreed. It yeah. is gone, but you're still rolling all the dice through because yeah. that's how the rules impact. Like they, happen, they happen in incremental stages. Yeah. I would prefer, like mm-hmm. in this ruling here, I would prefer it if it actually works like you can take a fuck ton of damage if you grizzly gore. That's great. Mm. And in every other case as well. Yeah. If if anyone is interested, it's just in allocating wounds in the core book. That's where it's located. Like for everyone. It, it agreed though. Like it would be. Do you want to be really, we'll draw a picture. We'll get a picture drawn so everyone. I can think see. we need to reel that rules thing. Because I don't think you well, can. Alloc- it. I don't think you can allocate more rule, wounds to someone that. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, it's all there. Um, <laughs> it, no, no. The steps stage is all there. What isn't one hundred percent clear? Like we've just talked about, yeah. is what happens when you reach the wound limit on a unit. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but a special ability is impacted, because in this case, it goes down. So I would agree with you that that could be a lot clearer. But the the steps for damage, you don't just stop rolling dice. No, no, no. The steps yeah. are there, absolutely. But... Yeah. Uh, uh, there are steps. So, um, so thanks to Colonel Cavage, it says the Snesh artifact actually refers to step four. So what's that? Wow. There are, Really? Yeah, yeah, they've got. They've started yes. to move. I think they'll. I think in the next rule book they'll write it out. But it, for new players, it can be especially wound. Why they use wounds when it's damage? It should, it, this this is sloppy. This should be damage. Yeah, yeah it should be damage. I think. But then that should have been true for a long time. It's like about how long did we have to wait for battle round and turn to be like different phrases? <laughs> anyway, but Winterleaf. Um, then you've got the Frozen Colonel, which is a Winterleaf hero. Yeah. This is the artifact of power. Once per battle, at the start of the combat phase, you can pick one friendly Winterleaf unit wholly within 18 inches of the bearer. After that unit's fought in that phase, um, it, after the unit's fought in that phase for the first time, it's within three inches of an enemy unit. It can make a piling move and then attack again with all of its melee weapons, armed for the te- second time. So you get a piling attack twice. That's good. It's wonderful. Once per battle as well. So, and as you pointed out earlier, when we we're off air, like it's not every game with four different units, like in Flesh Eater Courts. No. But arguably, I don't want the game to be that. So, a once per game ability to do that it's nice. is great. No. So, I think Winterleaf's one of the strongest. Yeah, I think so. Good. I think the the one you you said the first, uh, not the first, the second one, the Heartwood. Uh, that's probably my favorite. You like Heartwood more? Yeah, I think so. I, I think you'll see a lot of Heartwoods and a lot of Winterleaf. Yeah. 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 The Winterleaf have a higher potential, I guess. Yeah, fuck yeah. Um, yeah, I think Winterleaf's got yeah. some legs. Especially the extra... Because like, that's why we're talking about we might have to redesign the Sylvaneth armies in our heads. So, like, Horde Winterleaf, like, a, a big block of Tree Revs, right? Not tr- uh, yeah, Tree Revenants, with the Arch Revenant nearby, with plus one attack on them. So they've got three attacks each, and then any sixes they hit with are regenerating another attack. Yeah. Fuck yes, that's right. Nice. That's of course it's great. Yeah, it's, it's, it's going to do some work. It's got it does rend one two damage. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, rend one one damage. Sorry, um, I think that's good personally. Right then, Dreadwood. You got militia tormentors. You can reroll hit rolls of one for attacks made by Dreadwood spite revs. Yep. Uh, so this is the scary one. Cheap. Uh, yep. Yeah. Then you've got 
Um, <coughs> cheers, Colonel Cabbage. You can use this command ability once during uh, once during each of your turns. At the end of your movement phase, if you do so, pick one friendly Dreadwood unit wholly within 18 inches of a friendly Dreadwood hero. Remove that unit from the battlefield and then set it up again anywhere on the battlefield more than nine inches away from any units. That's nice. So this would be a way of taking those big hordes of tree rows we talked about. Um, again, getting plus one attack on them. Is the thing? Oh no! Wait. Yeah, you could do plus one attack on them. Probably. I mean, the guy has from the tree from the arch revenant. Yeah, he has good movements. He's got good movement. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Keep up. Um, yeah, he's super fast. Um, and so them all having extra attacks. Yeah. And most, well, most like importantly, you're getting an additional teleport, which yeah. which is good. Yeah. But this is only inside of Dreadwood, obviously. Then you got the command trait, uh, reroll successful battle shock test for enemy units while they're within six inches of this general. Okay, not too bothered about that. Artifact to power, jeweler withering, subtract one from the wound rolls for attacks made with melee weapons that target the bearer. I like that personally because yeah. we talked about maybe we don't go like Tree Lord Ancients. So if you had a, if you had like um, uh, a um, branch wraith yeah. near a unit in a forest, Griff Feather Charm. You know. <coughs> I don't know. I don't think that one is probably because those characters won't die from combat or shooting they will die from like endless spells crossing over them or yeah it feels like it at least yeah I think so I think uh, endless spells I, uh, yeah you said this earlier the plus one to wound doesn't matter when you roll in like of, like yeah the endless spells or anything else so not quite as nice as I would want it to be but not too bad no, um, something at least it's something at least um, then you've got harvest boon uh, you can reroll hit rolls of one for attacks made by friendly harvest boon units while wholly within charge uh, when units when they made a charge in the movement phase when made a charge, sorry, move in the charge phase. I'm, getting, I'm going too fast there. Um, so we're all hit rolls of one. That's pretty much all the time you see in that. Uh, command ability, you can use the command ability at the start of the combat phase. If you do so, pick one harvest unit within 12 inches of a friendly harvest boon hero. Until the end of that phase, add one to the attack characteristic of that unit's melee weapons. You cannot pick uh, the same unit to benefit from the command ability. This is, so harvest boons where you're just going to like pump attacks. So plus one attack there. Command trait, each time this general attacks with its melee weapons, it can make a 6-inch move after all of its attacks have been resolved. If it does so, it must finish the move more than 3 inches away from enemy units. So, so you can go in, hit, move back. It has to be on a... I, I see it more like they go in on you, and they have to attack their first, otherwise little dude is going to scrimper away, like a skink. Yeah, so like a skink. Probably. Yeah, which is good. Yeah, yeah that's not bad, especially like... If this is how, how you want to run it, right? Yeah. Then you've got the artifact of power, which is the silken, uh, the silken silent shik- sickle. Pick one of the bearer's melee weapons, add one to the attack's characteristic of that weapon. So if you really do, if you wanted to do like a dirthu, like that's a pretty nice. So it's tempting, right? It's always tempting. <laughs> You're always like, how do I do it? Uh, you know, plus one attack there, but there are other. There's a plus two attack weapon in there that you'd think probably you prefer to take. Um, so yeah. Uh, that's Harvest Boon. And I think... Oh, wait, the Wargrove. No, never mind the Wargrove. Yeah, that's the, the big one. I think that's everything, John. I think we've done it. Nice. We smashed it out, yeah. which is an unexpected part of our day, but still nice. And let me just double check. Casual uh, AOSing. Yeah. We, <laughs> so what do you make of it overall, just double checking? I think, I think it'll be fun. I think people will enjoy it. Because uh, you have those potential nukes that you can throw out with the command abilities from the skyports and the cheeky stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But also not being able to go first all the time. I guess it's way out of people's comfort zones who, who play Silver Net reg- reg- regularly, mm. right? So I think that's probably the biggest challenge for them to, to, to rethink their, their starting point of view, like how to deploy and how to where to be where not to be mm. yeah I think I, I, it's like I've said through the show I think it's going to come down to how low how, 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 how low you can drop your army I think that's going to be important because getting those forests out or thinking around that problem and yeah. then and then deciding do you know what I'm going to because we saw there the way to redeploy the spike revs right in the final bit with the dreadwood yeah it's kind of cool. Um, we know there's there's also the generic and the spells that's come out this weekend in in Forbidden Power as well. So mm-hmm. there are telep- there's at least two teleports yeah, inside yeah. there. Um, that spell efficient, that that spell reliant, and your army isn't a particularly great casting army. So 
that's a thing. The bow hunter build is like strong, or a bow hunter build th- feels like a thing. But there's a couple of issues there in that, like, it's like it's very static. The mobility is really your issue that you're trying to like resolve. Like, it does really elite good damage, but you don't really have an answer for hordes in that situation. Like, you you deal yeah. with some of the like solid threats. Um, well, I think you have the do you have the horde answer? Maybe oh, well, maybe I guess Dorothy or Lariel, I guess. You got no, you got you, both, both the dryads. There are ways to make the dryads, the spites, uh, or the tree revenants like kick out a ton of attacks with rerolls as well. So you yeah. can give you can give a horde a bunch of dice, right? Which is fine. They they don't have any strike back mechanics. They don't have any. What's really interesting about this book, John, is it feels like it was a book written when the Gits book was written, and it doesn't feel like. A corn, but the corn book or the snesh book or the that's what I'm saying. I don't get the gits book is my favorite book. Yeah, it, it feels like I'm not saying it's gits tier because I think gits can put a bunch of hordes out. And actually, arguably, it only costs you 270 points for 30 dryads, and you can put a fucking ton of yeah. them out. Yeah. Uh, Boy Phil, thank you for subscribing by the way for 13 months. Uh, hey Hector Detroit, evening Rob. Uh, it's Corky uh, from Wednesday uh, night. Uh, uh, and I hope, like for all all Sumerian players as well, that there isn't this this one Hagnar. Skyport or this one formation that that like is the go to. Well, we've only had a quick run through. There's not loads yeah. that. Uh, well, the two jump out right. Winterleaf and uh, Heartwood do jump out. Yeah. So two, but I mean, and I, some of them I, suck. Yeah. Uh, unless there's some spicy dwarves coming out. Yes, unless there, well, yeah. So there are ways to ally in some dwarves now. If you go for the uh, Iron, if you go Iron Bark, the o- Oaken Bark, yeah, um, Iron Bark, yeah, but. They're just not particularly solid. I do feel like maybe the trees are becoming a horde army because, you know, you're going to want to fish for as many opportunities to roll the sixes if you're going for Winterleaf, I'd argue. And you can't, I don't think you can put something like a Durthu down as a threat and be like, oh, I've stacked him up with all these extra attacks and his sixes are going to be more. I'll be like, well, that's, you'll have that one game. You, yeah, you'll have that one game where he will be a monster. <coughs> Um, but then the rest of the time, I think he's just going to get nuked. And you don't have the two options. You don't have the because if you go Dirt or Lariel, right now you've spent nine hundred points. Yeah, it's a, lot. it's a lot. You've got two hundred points back, which is kind of nice. Yeah, um, I'd probably go for Dreischer. I'd go for Dreischer. I think Dreischer's all right. Yeah. I think I think Dreischer's and Hordes is a thing. Yeah. Um, just thinking it through in my head now, because uh, you. You gotta get the stuff across the board, though, right? So if you take dry shark, you take her in winter leaf. So every six is a mortal wound and additional attack. Yeah, that's the thing. Yeah, yeah. So like, I think I think winter leaf's an option. I think I think the bow build's an option, but I think it definitely feels very different to the Sylvaneth book of before, and I definitely think it's a worse book, as in competitively. Like now, what as time will tell. I think it's a cleaner book. Oh, it's a cleaner book. I agree with that. Absolutely. Like a lot of the rules are cleared up, apart from a couple we talked through. Yeah, but the um, Hollywood Inn and the unmodified sixes and a bunch of stuff. That's nice. Um, but it didn't. I don't. It didn't deal with some of the key issues that the Sylvaneth book had in the not competitively. Just like the Wildwoods is a really good yeah. example. Um, and I mean, addressing not addressing the Tree Lord is a weird thing, right? Just going right Tree Lord the same. You're like, what the? Like what? Like, I, like it's bad. Like, don't just keep dropping its points. Like, understand that it's really bad and go for a change. Um, but I like hunters. I like hunters on the board. I think they look cool. I like dryads. I do like the way tree revs look as well. So yeah. that could be a thing. Um, and, you know, it's going to be, I think, the lack of magic. I don't know, 80-point casters, like you've said. You could put a bunch of them on the board. Yeah. But then, see, if you put a bunch of 80-point casters on the board, your issue now is that, you're a quite high drop army. Yeah. So, I'd, I'd say I'd probably just play as if I were to go second, and I will build my army around that. That will be my starting point of view. Like, how can I do this best if I go second? Yes, I would say that's probably the way to deal with the Silver Net. But now, yeah, yeah, because 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 stressing to go first. You will limit yourself quite a lot with just taking like those battalions and just skipping all the heroes. Because in reality, you need either either you need one drop or you need a five drop maybe, or go as high as you want. Mm. It's like those tiers, like in in how many drops you can have, right? Yeah. 
So I'll probably just settle my thought process with that. I'll probably go second, or it doesn't really matter. Mm. And I mean, you got one of the key things we've talked about here is that your ability to keep half the units off the board outside yeah. in the wild woods sounds great on paper, apart from you realise every tournament pack ever is going to have total commitment in, which is a battle plan that doesn't allow you to start anything off the board. Oh. Right? So now you're like, okay they're on the board now so like you have to you have to think through that I don't know like I'm really excited about reading the narrative see if any of it's changed up like I'm sure there'll be the intro stuff but there'll be some cool new things yeah. uh, Tree Rev's a cool model uh, and also the underspells are good like uh, maybe maybe we just like just when we said it out loud a Tree Lord Ancient doing Awakening in the Woods with that ghosty tree floating around there's a ton of mortal wounds coming out from them forests yep. if support you can get them up yeah some support characters there's some hordes you know, like Dryad Horde yeah. um, and the other Hordes, maybe just like will kick face. So, and and some of the stuff is cheap. And you have always like access to Gemini's who potentially win games, right? So, yeah, you got yeah, you got those. And there are some teleports that don't require you to use the Wildwoods, like from the Forbidden Power. Yeah. So there are options, and I think there's going to be some ways to go about that. And maybe it's a book of options, like you said at the top of the show. Hopefully, maybe it's a, a, a player's army to play. Hopefully, hopefully. Um, but we'll, we will see in the coming future. Uh, listen, anyone who's been watching, John, thank you so much for doing this with me. Thanks, man. Yeah, you appreciate it. Anyone who's been watching live on Twitch, uh, give us a shout. Uh, love you guys, and thank you for being here. Um, if you're watching back on YouTube or Twitch or Facebook, it'd be cool if you like it, share it, let some people know. Um, if you're listening to the podcast, make sure you go get yourself some water and hydrate, stay healthy. Yeah, you know, it's always important, John. Yeah, make sure you feel good. Um, Hope you've enjoyed the review. We do, so we're not one of those podcasts that get stuff for free uh, or early. So we just give our fair and honest review. We do competitive agency mark coverage, so like ours is normally orientated around that, I think. But normally, whether or not stuff's fun as well. Um, so join us for that in the future. Uh, anyone who wants to message us, send us messages with your thoughts and feelings, please do. Uh, we're supported and produced by everyone on Patreon and Twitch. So you guys are great. Uh, can't thank you enough and again everyone who supported us on the GoFundMe to get us the new camera gear you guys have got you guys and girls have got big dick energy mm -hmm. forever John any final thoughts? Wakanda <laughs> Wakanda forever nature finds a way yeah <laughs> nature does find a way